It's an absolutely perfect Saturday afternoon for college baseball in Oxford, Mississippi. Game two of a weekend series between number two Vanderbilt and number 18 Ole Miss coming your way from Swayze Field. Alongside Matt McLaughlin, I'm Richard Cross. Welcome to the ballpark for a big game between the Rebels and the Commodore. Series got started last night with Kumar Rocker on the mound for Vanderbilt. The freshman TJ McCants, an early two-run home run, got the Rebels on the board. One inning later in the third, Kevin Graham with an absolute bomb to right field. That made it three to nothing. That was all the scoring Ole Miss would have. Isaiah Thomas with a home run for Vanderbilt late in the ball game to make it three to one. Pitching was great for both starters. Kumar Rocker had nine strikeouts in the game. Doug Nikhazy, masterful on the mound for Ole Miss as the Rebels get a three to one. Game one win, a massive win last night, Matt, for Ole Miss. Yeah, it was really a terrific baseball game. You had two elite pitchers going at it, three big flies. Really can't ask for a whole lot more on a Friday night in the SEC. Two teams that have been dominant in game two of the series all season long, eight and three for Vanderbilt, Ole Miss 10 and one. However, for Ole Miss, that has largely been with Doug Nikhazy throwing game two. He pitched last night after the injury to Gunnar Hoagland, and today on the mound for the Rebels, it is Derek Diamond. The sophomore from Ramona, California, pitched really well on short notice in a start about three weeks ago against LSU. He's bounced back and forth between the bullpen and as a starter. Big opportunity for him today. Yeah, absolutely, and today's going to be a big radar gun day. We obviously know Leiter's got that fastball, but... Diamond's got a really good fastball himself. I think the biggest two things he can do today are work down in the zone. He gets in trouble when the curveball's up. And for him, he's just got to be Derek Diamond. You can't be Jack Leiter. you got to be yourself and trust your stuff. Right-hander for Ole Miss will face a good-hitting Vanderbilt Commodore team, second in the SEC in hitting. And they have got a big-time table setter at the top of the lineup in Enrique Bradfield, Jr., he is a terror on the base paths. 39 for 42 on the year. He's got 25 stolen bases in SEC play. You see the numbers there for Isaiah Thomas batting in the middle of the lineup. Thomas last night had the solo home run, also a walk and stole a base. So a good night for Isaiah Thomas last night. There you see Gunnar Hoagland. He will have Tommy John surgery in Birmingham at uh, the Andrews Sports Medicine Clinic. Dr. James Andrews doing that surgery for a partially torn UCL. That's coming up on Tuesday next week. Another big crowd at Swayze Field, just shy of 9,000 last night. The Ole Miss fans were treated to a win against the number two team in the country. Game two, just about to get underway with Derek Diamond on the mound. And Enrique Bradley Jr., excuse me, Bradfield Jr., standing in and taking strike one. Bradfield with an extremely strong case for SEC Freshman of the Year. One for four last night. He had a double. And he takes strike two and is quickly behind in the count. Sees a fastball and then a breaking ball. Yeah, two really good pitches there from Diamond. It gets started. You saw 94 on that first fastball and then that off-speed pitch there at 86. Dunhurst set up outside. The pitch misses away for ball one. Matt, there may not be a, a, a player in the country that it is more important to get an out of as a leadoff hitter than Bradfield because of what he's able to do on the bases. Yeah, no question. You know, you walk or give up a single or even a double, it ends up on second or third base. And especially to lead off a game where you got a chance to take a series, this is a big first at bat here for Derek Diamond, this Ole Miss bunch that's trying to take a big series for themselves. Two balls and two strikes to Bradfield, and it's now full. Enrique Bradfield hitting 356 on the year. He's got a 470 on base percentage. He's walked more than he struck out this season. 31 walks and 28 strikeouts. Leads the team in hitting in SEC play. Checked his swing and was able to hold up, and so it's a full count walk to Enrique Bradfield, and the game will begin now. Especially after losing in game one, you've got to believe that Enrique Bradfield will eventually be on the move with Carter Young at the plate. And that was as good as you can do it from a leadoff hitter. Gets down 0-2, works it full, and Diamond tried to get him to chase a few times, but a good job by Bradfield to work the count. And as you said, now, that, now it really begins, and we'll see if they pitch out here at all. 
So a leadoff walk as a base runner for Vanderbilt, and you get the first throw over to first. When this is a tough spot for a pitcher because you've obviously got to be most concerned with the guy at the plate. But again, Bradfield's numbers on the base paths. 39 out of 42 in stolen bases for the year. 25 of 27 in SEC play. Pitch out that drifted back over the plate there for ball one. Had a review last night with Bradfield. He was called out trying to steal third, and after a video review, that was overturned, and he was called safe. In this spot, if you're diamond, you, as you said, you got a guy at the plate with 13 homers, and you really got to focus in there. You just got to try to be quick to the plate, make sure that you keep Bradfield on us as best you can, and give your shot, your guy behind the plate a shot to throw him out. Carter Young takes a strike on the outside corner. Carter Young not hitting for a ton of average, but the power numbers are really good. Just a 273 average for the season, 225 in league play, but he's got 13 bombs this year, and eight of them have come in SEC play. Check there by Diamond. It's thrown over a couple times already, but that time Bradfield looked like he might have been leaning, trying to get a jump to second base. Runner goes. Throw to second is in time. Hayden Dunhurst able to throw out Enrique Bradfield Jr. And anytime he's called out, they ask for a review. Well, it doesn't happen too often. Looks like Gonzalez got the tag down there. Dunhurst was very fortunate. He got a fastball really up in the zone. It's a great pitch to throw on. Looks like he got him on the helmet there before the foot got in. Yeah, helmet was up. And you look at the trail leg. It goes into the low part of the bag, but his lead foot is in the air. So, again, last night you had... Bradfield stealing third. He was called out in real time, and after a video review, it was overturned. He is called out today. Yeah, one last night, he was like he had beat it the whole way out, but this one looks like he's he's out. Out pretty should be a pretty quick review. And it's always interesting how coaches approach the challenges. I mean, we're two hitters into the game, and Tim Corbin going to use one of his already. Good job by Gonzalez, avoiding the slide and also getting the tag down. A little bit of a reaction from the fans in the stands as they show it on the video board. Hayden Dunhurst is convinced that he was able to catch Enrique Bradfield Jr. This is a big call early in this ball game. It's either one out at base is empty or nobody out and runner on second. And after the review, the call on the field stands. So Bradfield is caught stealing for just the fourth time this year and just the third time in SEC play. He's now 39 of 43 in stolen bases. And you're reminded of the weapon that Ole Miss has behind the plate in Dunhurst. Just got such a quick delivery back there. Again, good pitch to throw on, made a strong throw, and a good tag by Gonzalez. So one out, base is empty, and a 2-1 coming to Carter Young, and he hits a fly ball into center field. T.J. McCants drifting back. It's close to the warning track and makes the catch for the second out of the inning. Wind is blowing out, kind of helping a ball to left field today. Tim Corbin coaches in the third base box. Head coach at Vanderbilt has been just outstanding. 19 seasons in Nashville, 786 wins, couple of national championships, 14 straight NCAA tournaments, 894 career wins in 24 seasons as a head coach. And basically everything that Vanderbilt has ever accomplished in baseball has happened under the leadership of Tim Corbin. Yeah, he's built. An exceptional program there and just really have a great identity is just developing big league pitchers and it's done just a wonderful job there and they are just always in the hunt every single year it's not easy to do in this league but 
certainly build a monster there in Nashville. Dominic Keegan takes off speed for strike two behind in the count early. No balls and two strikes. Lead off full count walk to Bradfield. He was caught stealing. Carter Young flew out to center and now Dominic Keegan behind in the count 0 and 2. Ole Miss got a game one win to start the series last night, 3 to 1, just the second loss of the season for Vanderbilt's Kumar Rocker. He came in 11 and 1. Rocker threw seven innings in that game last night, gave up three earned runs. Swing and a miss. Strikeout on the fastball to Dominic Keegan and a good start for Derek Diamond. We'll get our first look at Jack Leiter when we come back. Jack Leiter on the mound for Vanderbilt, first pitching for the first time in two weeks. His last start was against Florida on May 1st. He worked four innings in that game and threw 93 pitches. He was un-Jack Leiter-like. Seven and two on the year, 2.1 ERA. There's a little bit of discussion this week as to whether or not he was going to start or was going to get another week off. He's been absolutely phenomenal this year. He's got a no-hitter, 106 strikeouts, just 29 walks. And you look at the whip at .89. There's not really enough that you can say to talk about the job that Jack Leiter's done on the mound. Yeah, there's no question. You know, he's just been the god. The numbers are gaudy, and what you're going to see is the reason he's such a top five pick. I mean, the the mechanics are just so polished. You'll see what we call drop and drive mechanics. So at his frame, about six one, he utilizes his lower half as much as he possibly can, and he generates a ton of kinetic energy to get that fastball up close to 100. He's got full control over four pitches, and but that fastball is what gets the scouts fired up. And many so there's a lot of radar guns that have a hard time keeping up with Jack Leiter. It'll be a fun matchup to watch him pitch this Ole Miss lineup that's been red hot of late. It's an Ole Miss lineup that is the best in the SEC. You see T.J. McCants last night with a two-run home run. Gonzalez, Chatagnier, and Graham at the top of the order. Hayden Dunhurst has been struggling a bit as of late, stays in that cleanup spot, and then you see McCants there hitting sixth in the lineup. He is second on the team in average at 343. So the last two outings for Jack Leiter, five innings against Mississippi State. He gave up four earned runs there, four innings against Florida, gave up seven runs, five of them earned, and had only four strikeouts in those four innings. So Jack Leiter with a return to the mound, the right-hander. This is low for ball one with a 94-mile-an-hour fastball to Jacob Gonzalez. And this is a freshman that has been a star this year. 0 for 4 with a strikeout last night. That was in his first at-bat of the game. He saw three pitches. All of them were strikes. Breaking ball in the dirt and is ahead in the count 2 0. But this freshman season for Jacob Gonzalez, 335 with seven home runs, 40 runs batted in. He started every game this year for Ole Miss at shortstop. Gonzalez is ahead in the count 3 0. Jack Leiter. Fastball, he kind of pitches in the low to mid-90s, 93, 94, 95. He has touched 99 this season. 3-0. That misses. It's a four-pitch walk to Jacob Gonzalez. Ole Miss has the leadoff man on base, just like Vanderbilt did in the top of the first. Yeah, and I think if you're Ole Miss, you got to, with Leiter's absence last weekend from the mound, you know, I think you're going to want to Trying to see if he can settle in and establish the zone right there. Four-pitch walk in the first battery faces. And they're obviously the stuff is elite. So if you get an opportunity to get a fastball in the zone, you really got to take advantage. And I think if Ole Miss, that, that curveball has a tendency to kind of bump up where you get a good read on. Chatagnier hits it on the ground to second. Colwick to Young to Keegan for a 4-6-3 double play. And then he immediately erases the base runner. Nothing better than a race a four-pitch walk with a one-pitch double play. And so Chatagne really got a good swing on that fastball and drove it back up the middle, but well-placed defender. And Man, Vanderbilt made some plays last night that would have been all over the Sports Center top ten. 
Colwick was outstanding at second base last night. There's a first pitch strike to Kevin Graham. You saw his reaction. Solo home run, also a double the opposite way against the shift last night. Vanderbilt plays with a dramatic shift against Kevin Graham, and he swings through the off-speed pitch for strike two. Colwick over at second base did make the SC top ten last night. This one in the dirt, swing and a miss. Three pitches, and Kevin Graham not a great at bat there. First strikeout of the game for Jack Leiter. Ole Miss gets a leadoff walk, but then a double play and a strikeout. We go to the second. Hard to draw it up much better than upper 70s with a little light breeze out of the south, which means blowing out at Swayze Field. Scoreless between Ole Miss and Vanderbilt as we go to the top of the second inning. Already a wild day in the SEC. Tennessee got a three-run walk-off home run from Max Ferguson, the second home run of the day by Ferguson to come from behind and beat Arkansas in Knoxville to split that series with the number one ranked Razorbacks. First pitch strike to C.J. Rodriguez. Rodriguez, the catcher for Vanderbilt, hitting 286 on the year. Certainly the Vanderbilt Commodores keeping an eye on that series in Knoxville. It's coming into the weekend, Vanderbilt. Tennessee by a game in the win column. Vanderbilt series against Alabama last weekend cut short because of heavy rains in the Nashville area. Only got two of the three in last weekend. The 0-2 to Rodriguez fouled back, got a piece to stay alive. Commodores 35 and 11 overall, 16 and 8 in the SEC. Nine of their 16 SEC wins have come on the road. Dunhurst behind the plate makes the catch and foul ground for the first out of the inning. It's about as good a job as you can do if you're Derek Diamond. Like breaking ball for a strike, fastball strike, fastball up for a strike, and back to the breaking ball for an easy pop-up. That off-speed pitch he's thrown so far today has been tight and it's been down so far in the zone. Good sign if you're Mike Bianco. Derek Diamond gave up a leadoff walk to Enrique Bradfield Jr. He was caught stealing, got a fly out and a strikeout to end the first and a pop out in foul ground to start things off here in the second inning with Parker Noland at the plate. Noland starting his 46th game of the year, and he's done a little bit of everything for Vanderbilt. In the DH, he's played third base, he's played some second base, he's played some first base. He is the third baseman today for the Commodores, and he takes strike one. Parker Nolan getting the start at third. Jason Gonzalez is on the bench today for the Commodores. The 1-1. One, 1-2. One. One Backdoor slider there from Diamond to get ahead in the count. There you get a look at Kumar Rocker. He was good last night. Had the loss, but... Ole Miss was just efficient in their opportunities to score runs, and he was still electric. 99 pitches in seven innings last night for Rocker. This pitch misses up, and the count evens at two and two. Rocker gave up five hits, two long balls, and that was the difference in the ballgame. He had eight strikeouts and a walk. And Ole Miss was aggressive to the fastball, especially early, and that's what you've got to do against these hard-throwing Vanderbilt pitchers. 2-2. Two -two. Strike three called. Nolan goes away looking. That's the second strikeout for Derek Diamond. And they're two down in the second. Tell you what, so far in this one, Derek Diamond's brought his paintbrush today because that ball was painted on the outside part of the plate. Perfectly located. Really good start to this game for him. And Again, we talked about the outset. Sometimes you go up against you know, the 
have top five guys that are going in, in the draft to try to do too much. So far, he looks like he's really staying within himself and just trying to hit his spots. Here's Isaiah Thomas, who had a good game last night for Vanderbilt. Had a solo home run, stolen base. He had an epic at bat in the top of the ninth inning as well. You see the junior from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Not sure Mike Bianco felt the same way with his starter or his closer having to throw about double his pitch count in that one at bat. Yeah, Taylor Broadway in two innings last night threw 33 pitches, 15 of them came to this guy, Isaiah Thomas. Ended up grounding out to short. Ball and a strike to Thomas. He hits a fly ball to left center field. McCants on the run. That ball is gone. Tenth home run of the season for Isaiah Thomas. His second of the weekend at Vanderbilt. Strikes first, taking a 1-0 lead. A really great swing there by Thomas. I mean, you see this breaking ball just didn't quite have the same downward action. The diamond's been throwing it today. You see this ball just kind of hung, hangs up there, almost backs up to the middle of the plate. Thomas knew it right away, drove that ball to left center. Really great piece of hitting there. It looked like he knew it off the bat. T.J. McCants made a run at it. Hits it to the right of the left field power alley. Just to the left of straightaway center. That's a great swing by Isaiah Thomas for his 10th home run of the year to give the Commodores a lead and bring Spencer Jones to the plate, the D.H. Swings through the fastball for strike one. Vanderbilt never led in last night's ball game. They fell behind two to nothing in the second inning. It was three to nothing. They got the solo home run from Thomas late in the ball game. I guess that was in the seventh inning off of Doug Nikhazy. Commodores with their first lead of the weekend. Spencer Jones behind in the count. No balls and two strikes. Diamond. Breaking ball up there. Still 0-2. Really too good of a pitch there if you're Derek Diamond. See Vanderbilt when scoring first this year, 22-3. and three. There are a lot of different ways you can spin <laughs> Vanderbilt's record. You go, oh, wow, yeah. that's really good. Not a, not a lot of losses in general. Now tip held on by Dunhurst for strike three. That's the third strikeout of the game for Derek Diamond. But a two-out solo home run from Isaiah Thomas as the doors on the board first. Senior day at Ole Miss, the final home Saturday of the regular season. That will close out the regular season next weekend in Athens. Taylor Broadway, Greer Holston, Austin Miller, Tyler Myers all playing in their final regular season home game. How about this senior class, 172 wins. That's the winningest senior class in Ole Miss baseball history. Pitch to Hayden Dunhurst, misses for ball one. A 95-mile-an-hour fastball there from Jack Leiter. There's just eight pitches in the first inning. A four-pitch walk, a one-pitch ground ball double play, and a three-pitch strikeout to Kevin Graham. I think that math's right. You don't see that too often. It was pretty impressive uh, bounce back after the leadoff walk. Four pitches and then four pitches out of the inning. Oh. A Dunhurst is headed to first after being hit by the pitch. That's not something that Jack Leiter has done much of this season. That's only the sixth hit pitch or hit batter of the year. That one's not going to feel good right on the inside. Front part of the calf. Somebody for Ole Miss, usually the guy that's getting hit for Ole Miss is at the plate right now. But another leadoff walk for Ole Miss. We'll see how they're able to attack Leiter. This go round. Eighth time this year that Dunhurst has been hit by a pitch. And just a bench goes after the first pitch. It's a fly ball to shallow right. Thomas, easy play, one away. See, 
bench there. Very aggressive. Got a curveball there up in the zone. I think that's one pitch that if you're Ole Miss, lighters, break the ball's good. The curveball, the, the slider is very good. But that curveball tends to have a little bit of a jump out of his hand. And sometimes you're able to pick it up a little bit better. I think bench did that in that spot right there, but just missed and got underneath it. And, but lighter, just like last inning, is able to bounce right back and get an out. DJ McCants takes away for ball one. Leiter has four pitches that he uses. He throws fastball 65% of the time, whether it's right-handed hitter or left-handed hitter. That one had a ton of depth, unlike the one to bench. So curveball that time. Slider in the low to mid 80s, change up mid 80s. Curveball upper 70s, maybe 80, 81. 1 1. Comes back with a 95 mile an hour fastball and gets ahead of McCants, a ball and two strikes. A good cut there by the freshman. Talked a lot about Bradfield and the crazy numbers he's been putting up. DJ McCants has had quite the campaign in his freshman year as well. Off speed there, and McCants goes down swinging. Second strikeout of the game for Jack Leiter. 96, 95 on the pitch before that. Just pulls the string. Really nasty pitch there by Leiter. A whole lot McCants is going to be able to do with that one. Two down in the inning for Hayden Leatherwood. That's the first changeup we may have seen today. So your left-handed hitter for Ole Miss, you're going up there looking for the 96. Throws the 87 mile an hour changeup there for a strike. That's it's tough business to be in. Then comes back at 94 in the same location. Yeah, there are a lot of guys that throw an 87 mile an hour fastball, <laughs> an 87 mile an hour changeup. It's next level stuff, and there's no question that Jack Leiter is going to be a next level guy. The 0-2 to Leatherwood. Swing and a miss. That's the third strikeout of the game back to back. So two innings in a row, Ole Miss gets the leadoff man on base. Two innings in a row, no damage to Jack Leiter. 1-0 Vanderbilt after two. Solo home run from Isaiah Thomas, the difference in this ball game. Early Vanderbilt leading it 1-0 over Ole Miss. Derek Diamond back out on the mound for the Rebels. Headed to the top of the third inning. 8-9 and 1 coming to the plate for the Commodores. Tate Colwick, Troy Leneve, and then back to the top of the order and Enrique Bradfield Jr. Colwick the junior from Memphis. Had one hit last night. Five home runs on the year. Strike from Derek Diamond, a 91 mile an hour fastball. First eight appearances of the year for Derek Diamond were starts. After his start against Arkansas in game three of that series, though, he was moved to the bullpen. Pitched in relief for Ole Miss against Mississippi State and Little Rock. Made kind of an emergency start against LSU. Gunnar Hoagland had some bicep soreness. And he went six innings, gave up just four hits, only one earned run, and back to the bullpen for his last three outings against South Carolina, Arkansas State, and Texas A&M. Texas A&M was, right, that was the game that Gunnar Hoagland was pulled immediately once they right. noticed something was wrong. So it was almost a, another spot start. But interesting thing with Diamond, just kind of watching him throughout the year, felt like maybe a lot of, he's running into some issues, maybe some confidence. But since that spot started against LSU, 13 innings pitch, only two earned runs, 15 strikeouts. The 0-2 to Colwick. Just misses for ball one. And sometimes as an athlete, you can get in your own head and you just need a chance to get run out there without having much time to think. And I think he's really starting to find his stuff again. And this was a very highly touted guy coming into this Ole Miss program. 
One, two. Just off the plate there. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Probably outside, maybe a little bit down. That would have been a pitcher's strike had it been called strike three. On plate umpire Matthew Wilbanks calling balls and strikes. He's joined by Scott Kennedy, Alex Ziegler, and Jeremy Dupree on the bases today. There's another strikeout for Derek Diamond as Colwick goes down swinging. That is the fourth of the game for the Rebel starter, Diamond. Tonight at 10 Eastern, 9 Central, the SEC Now team will have highlights from a busy day on the softball and baseball diamonds. You can always watch on the ESPN app. Caleb Rowe and Madison Shipman will join from Tuscaloosa, the SEC softball championship game tonight between Alabama and Florida. And a big, wild day on the diamond in the SEC. Kind of looking at what's happening around the league. Missouri trying to take two of three from number three, Mississippi State. They have a four-run lead in the ninth inning of that ball game. Alabama trying to split the series with LSU. Crimson tied up six to three after losing last night. Auburn got a win over Texas A&M. They're tied at seven today in the sixth inning. Georgia and Florida coming up later this evening, a 5.30 central start time. South Carolina's gotten the first two against Kentucky. They won nine to nothing today. A big and important weekend for South Carolina. And then Arkansas and Tennessee split. Tennessee with a three-run walk-off home run at the bottom of the ninth inning at Lindsey Nelson Stadium. See the game in Starkville in the top of the ninth inning. Now a five-run lead for Missouri over Mississippi State. The knee behind in the count, the one-two. It's a piece to stay alive. I'm not sure that there would be a bigger surprise that we've seen this season than if Missouri were to go into Starkville and win that series against Mississippi State. Yeah, there's been some, some big games. But that, that series would be one that was sticking out among, among the rest, that's for sure. Always a fun time of year, though, in the SEC. One, two misses in the count evens. Two balls and two strikes. I like the Premier League. You got intrigue at the top, and you got intrigue down. Guys trying to get work their way into the postseason play, getting to Birmingham. Auburn, Texas A&M, and Missouri fighting for that last spot in Hoover at the SEC tournament. This count goes full to the nine-hole hitter, Leneve. Two weeks from today, it will be semifinal Saturday in Hoover. Full count pitch. Lifted to left. Kevin Graham. Long run, makes the catch just a step shy of the fence in the warning track for the second out of the inning. That ball just kept carrying out to left field. Diamond went back to back off speed pitches, goes back to the fastball there, and it will get the fly ball, but Graham was able to run that one down. Almost got that ball, got out to the warning track. Wow, Missouri just hit a three-run home run, a no-doubter, and they lead 16-8 to eight in the top of the ninth inning in Starkville against Mississippi State. Two down here in the top of the third, and back to Enrique Bradfield, Jr. He fell behind in the count 0-2 to start the ball game and then watched four straight pitches miss. Ultimately caught stealing, trying to get to second. Now tip, strike two. Good pitching there by Diamond. First at bat, went with a fastball. They got looking, and then a changeup to get down 0-2. This time, went with the slider and then the fastball. Good job by mixing it up there by Derek Diamond. That's the start of the second trip through the order for Vanderbilt. All right, field fouls it off. It stays alive at the plate. First nine through the order. One walk, four strikeouts, and a solo home run. 
And that's the difference in the ball game right now. Commodore's up 1-0 thanks to the solo home run with two outs in the second from Isaiah Thomas. Swing and a miss. Fifth strikeout of the game for Derek Diamond. Goes with the fastball and then pulls the string on that changeup. Just filthy pitching there by number two for Ole Miss. Reps coming to bat down one in the second. Cool pregame ceremony today outside the pavilion between Vaughn Hemingway Stadium and the basketball arena of the pavilion at Ole Miss. The Coolidge Ball statue was unveiled, and then he comes across campus, throws out the first pitch today. Village Ball, the first black student athlete at the University of Mississippi, and just an all-around good guy. 1970 made the all-freshman team in the SEC, two-time first-team All-SEC, played basketball at Ole Miss from 1970 to 1974. Long-time Oxford resident that has been a big part of the community. Had a son that I graduated high school with. All comes full circle. It does. Coolidge is one of the, she said, one of the good guys. I think almost athletics director Keith Carter said that at that ceremony and just a cool moment uh, for he and his family. And as you said, it's been a staple in the community for a long time and just a really well-deserved honor. Ball and a strike to Cale Baker batting in the eight hole today for Ole Miss. First baseman for the Rebels. Vanderbilt playing him to pull. Pretty dramatically. Pitch misses away for ball two. Two balls and a strike. Second baseman Colwick is on the left side of the second base bag out on the edge of the grass. A lot of room on the right side if Kyle Baker could go the other way. This pitch runs inside for ball three. Gonzalez walked on four pitches to start the game. So almost had the leadoff man on in the first. Dunhurst hit by a pitch to start the second inning. Rebels do not yet have a hit off of Jack Leiter. This one's popped behind home plate and out of play. Jack Leiter had a pretty remarkable stretch back in late March against South Carolina. Nine inning complete game, no hitter, 16 strikeouts and just one walk. He walked the leadoff man in the game through 124 pitches. And then he followed it up in a road start with 101 pitches seven innings and no hits allowed against Missouri. If you're, if you're playing a skins game, sometimes <laughs> you have to validate to win the skin. Right. He validated the no hitter in a big way just seven days later. Yeah, the numbers through the first eight starts were just I mean, out of this world good. And we mentioned a little bit of a struggle the last few outings, but. Dale Baker hits this one high. Just a few steps out into the outfield grass, and the shortstop Young makes the catch for the first out of the inning. If Baker got himself in a good count, fouled off a couple fastballs, got another one. Could have handled just popped that one up. Good job by Leiter to come back and get the first leadoff guy this day for him. Alvin Harris, the nine-hole hitter, batting for Ole Miss with one out, and the base is empty, and he takes fastball strike one from Jack Leiter. Jack, of course, the son of major, former Major League player Al Leiter. Pretty darn good pitcher in his own right. No question about that. So you got Al Leiter who had a no-hitter in the big leagues. Jack Leiter who has a no-hitter at the collegiate level. Pretty good genetics, I'd say. But do it, and they, you know, it's interesting about them, they do it in different ways. You know, that's not, obviously, I mean, they're completely different pitchers. And yeah. it's just, it's really fun to see Jack really create his own identity as a power pitcher. So Jack Leiter out of New Jersey. Number two overall prospect as Calvin Harris swings and misses. 
Tied up on that one for second out of the inning. And the fourth strikeout of the game for Jack Leiter. So the first trip through the order, a walk, a hit batter, four strikeouts. No hits and certainly no runs so far for Ole Miss. And that slider there to Harris was just filthy. You saw really just an uncomfortable swing by the freshman for Ole Miss. Jacob Gonzalez hits a rocket to right field. A single fielded by Thomas for the first hit of the game. And that's the Jacob Gonzalez that you are used to seeing. Aggressive to the first pitch, especially when it's a fastball. Yeah, well, that, that 188, I think, might have been a change uh -oh. up, up in the zone. 88 was a fastball for the rest of us. Um, sure. But uh, that one, Gonzalez saw that ball up in the zone, did a really good job of staying down with it and drove that one into right. We've seen Leiter try to mix that pitch in there a few times. Two out for Peyton Chatagnier. Chatagnier grounded into a 4-6-3 double play in his first at bat of the game. Yeah, he got a fastball. Vanderbilt was played, they're playing him the exact same way. This at bat, pretty dramatic shift. But uh, he hit it right at the second baseman, but he really put a good charge into that fastball he got in his first A-B. Makes a strike, and the count even set one and one. Ole Miss leading in SEC games. The league in batting average, on-base percentage, hits, runs batted in. And then one category that they would just prefer not be leading the league in, and that's double plays. Ole Miss is now grounded into 21 double plays in SEC games and 37 for the year. That's a pretty crazy number, double plays. I mean, sometimes you're unlucky, but almost becomes a, a habit with that number, that's for sure. It's the corner for strike two to Peyton Chatagnier. Saw from the body language, Chatagnier thought that that pitch was outside. You saw Rodriguez just kind of point his thumb over there before that pitch. He's telling Leiter, don't make sure you don't forget about the freshman over there and let him swipe one just that now that you're in a one-two count with two outs. Out of the zone. 96 that time from Leiter. Yeah, and the spin rate that he gets on his fastball, too, there's just not much drop to it. And the, you'll see if we get a side by side shot, just he gets so much drive and he gets so much depth in his delivery, just really drives off that right leg. And the ball just looks like it's humming in there at 96 and just really is no downward action to it. Foul back. And on the hands that time, Chatagne stays alive. Gonzalez with a two out single, he's at first. Jacob Gonzalez. Had a lot of success on the base paths this year. He's two out of six in stolen bases. Certainly you understand Vanderbilt being careful with him, though. So almost would love to get runner into scoring position. Strike three called inside corner. Again, you see the reaction from Chatagne. That's the fifth strikeout of the game. And Ole Miss strands a runner here in the third. Three complete. Vanderbilt won. Ole Miss nothing. After their dramatic walk-off win at home today against Arkansas, Tennessee gets an 18 and eight in SEC play. Vanderbilt just behind Tennessee. Then you got Florida playing perhaps their best baseball of the season right now up to 16 and nine. South Carolina has taken the first two this weekend from Kentucky to get to 13 and 12. And you got Georgia and Missouri at the bottom of the SEC Eastern Division. Missouri 
Trying to close it out against Mississippi State with an eight-run lead in the bottom of the ninth inning, trying to pick up their seventh SEC win. Carter Young here for Vanderbilt to lead things off in the fourth, shows bunt and takes strike one. The 0-1 from Diamond. Doubled up there on the change of it. Threw a really good one. Young showed bunt. Pulled back, but Diamond's starting to pitch backwards now. Get through the second time of the order for Vanderbilt. The 1-1. One, 2-1 one. One now to Carter Young. All the headlines go to Enrique Bradfield Jr. on the base paths, and for good reason. But Carter Young is a perfect 9 out of 9 in stolen bases. Not a guy that you want on to start the inning. 3-1 and one now to Carter Young. Vanderbilt got a solo home run from Isaiah Thomas in the second inning with two outs. Low scoring game last night, Ole Miss winning 3 to 1. Commodores the 1 0 lead here in game two of the series. And it's not even close. Carter Young does reach to start the inning. Get a look at the SEC West with Arkansas on top after their loss. Mississippi State unable to make up any ground today, though, as they lose the series to Missouri in Starkville. Ole Miss. Trying to stay as close as they can to the Bulldogs and the Razorbacks at the top of the West. Then it's Alabama, LSU playing in Baton Rouge this weekend. Bama leading in game two. A&M and Auburn are playing on the Plains. Missouri beat Mississippi State 16-8 to today to take the series from the Bulldogs. Yeah, pretty heck of a job. I mean, that's just a heck of a job by Mizzou. Not a ton to play for here down the stretch and doing what a lot of teams struggle to do, and that's take a series in Starkville. It certainly falls into the category of didn't see that coming. <laughs> Soft toss over to first to keep Carter Young honest. Dominic Keegan at the plate. He struck out swinging his first time up. 52 pitches so far today for Eric Diamond on the mound for Ole Miss. This and two other games going on in the league right now. Florida and Georgia will play later tonight. They are well over half an hour from first pitch. Alabama trying to split the series. They lead 6-3 to three over LSU in Baton Rouge. That's in the bottom of the ninth. And Auburn has a 9-7 lead over Texas A&M. Plainsman Park in Auburn, Alabama. We talked about how Florida playing their best baseball. That's bad news for, I think, the rest of college baseball. That is a supremely talented team that is, I think, suddenly starting to figure a lot of things out. Ball lifted to left. Kevin Graham going back, and that ball is gone. Dominic Keegan hits his 10th home run of the season, just slipped it just over the top of the wall. And Vanderbilt now leads three to nothing. Second home run of the game for the Commodores. Yeah, and this pitch here by Diamond is not even a terrible pitch. Really just a great swing by King. Watch how King goes and gets this ball. You see how he kind of gets extended out on that front leg and just gets great extension on that front arm. And, uh, you know, in the first home run, that, that, it was a curveball up in the zone. That one was a pretty good pitch and just a really great swing there by Keegan. Dominic Keegan now in double digits in home runs for the year for Vanderbilt. This ball lifted to center field, and McCants makes the catch. C.J. Rodriguez retired for the first out of the inning. Similar to last night's ball game when Ole Miss got its first three runs with a two-run jack and a solo shot. Vanderbilt does it in the reverse order today with a solo home run in the second. And a two-run home run here in the fourth. Parker Nolan at the plate, the third baseman for Vanderbilt, takes strike one.
Big crowd today at Swayze Field that is awfully quiet right now looking at the scoreboard and seeing the Rebels trailing 3-0. With Jack Leiter on the mound, 3-0 feels like a some, lot. Something more like 10-0. Uh, but, uh, you know, Diamond here with one out in the fourth, you know, his job is to keep his team in the game. And, you know, credit Vanderbilt, one mistake pitch and one great swing. But he's still had a pretty good outing so far today. 1-1 one, one fouled away. Parker Nolan behind in the count of ball and two strikes. 8,986 last night in game one. This has kind of the look and the feel of a 10, 11,000. We'll see. Ball and two strikes to Parker Nolan. Left-handed hitter. Stays alive. So got no Diamond got Nolan on a 2-2 fastball. His first at bat. There you see the 1-2 curve. See if he tries to maybe elevate a fastball here. He has been going to that changeup more frequently than I think we've seen him in previous starts. So got a couple options here now on the 1-2. Teases away with the fastball there. Well outside, the count evens the two balls and two strikes. Full count now to Nolan. Good miss there by Diamond. You saw him try to. Sneak that fastball in down and away just off the plate. Full count pitch misses away. That's the second walk of the inning and the third of the game for Derek Diamond. Isaiah Thomas went deep his first time up. Second long ball of the weekend. For the Vanderbilt right fielder, Thomas. Six-hole hitter comes to the plate here with a runner on first and one out, and Mike Bianco will come out and will talk with Derek Diamond before he pitches to Thomas. I think if you're Mike Bianco, you just want to just have a little chat, get Diamond settled back down, and again, and he's put some good swings on some good pitches so far today. You see just the two hits, both home runs. It's one of those situations where you want to go talk to your young pitcher and just make sure this inning doesn't get away from you. The way that the bullpen has been set up for Ole Miss down the stretch here, he really, Coach Bianco really needs his starters to go deep into ball games for them to have the best shot to win, especially with Broadway throwing two innings in the previous night. Two pitchers used last night for Ole Miss as Doug Nikhazy went seven innings. Taylor Broadway threw 33 pitches in the final two innings. Ole Miss without Gunnar Hoagland this week and for the remainder of the season. They'll have Tommy John surgery on Tuesday of this coming week to repair torn UCL. Isaiah Thomas sitting at 10 home runs on the year. He bunts it foul. And that's something that is a big part of what Vanderbilt does offensively. They lead the SEC in sack bunts, 17 of them. That's an SEC play for the year, 23 sack bunts for Vanderbilt. Different coaches have different philosophies with regard to the bunt. Clearly, Tim Corbin is a big part of what Vanderbilt does offensively. Just feels like it'd be awfully hard to put a bunt on a guy that's already got a couple of home runs on the week yet. He swings through a fastball there and is behind in the count 0 2. And sometimes after you do hit a bomb, the third baseman will be back 
quite a bit. I mean, a guy like Thomas, you're going to play back anyway for the most part, but Thomas might have saw an opportunity where he could, and nothing else, move the runner up, but he might have been able to bump for a hit if he got it down the third baseline, but now two strikes on him. See where Diamond goes on the 0-2. How about a fastball? Swing and a miss or the strikeout. Second out of the inning. Yeah, good life to that fastball. 0-2. Might have thought he might go to the outside part of the plate, try to get him to chase him up. Really just throws a nice fastball that ran back across the outside part of the plate. Big bounce back after the home run and walk there from Derek Diamond. Sixth strikeout of the game from Derek Diamond. He has walked three. 65 pitches through three and two-thirds today for Diamond. Parker Noland over at first base, dives back in safely. Nolan three for three in stolen bases this year. Long swing and a miss from Spencer Jones there. Jones struck out swinging to end the second inning. Vanderbilt's got some big dudes, none bigger though than Spencer Jones at 6'7. Tell you what, he's on my my team and we're playing some pickup games. I mean, he's the first round pick. No question. He looks like not only a great or a great baseball player, but could be playing some power forward in this league too. Under Tim Corbin, Vanderbilt's never really been short of physical specimens. That's not a prerequisite for Tim Corbin either. If you can play, you can play. I mean, you look at Enrique Bradfield. He is not thick, but he can fly and he can swing it. But was it Roe Coleman a couple of years ago? Mm -hmm. yeah, Tim Corbin has an unbelievable eye for talent. There's no question about that. It's not difficult to attract great talent to Vanderbilt either these days. This ball hit high and deep to right field, and you can forget about that one. Full extension for Spencer Jones, his second home run of the year. That's the second two-run home run of the inning. And Vanderbilt leads five to nothing. That ball was crushed. The six-seven frame got every bit of that baseball. See that fastball down and in, and Jones just hits an absolute tater. It's right center field. I mean, just to the right of the batter's eye. I mean, that's about as far as you can hit a baseball here. Diamond knew it immediately. Vanderbilt has three hits in this game, and all three have left the yard. A solo home run from Isaiah Thomas and two two-run jacks here in the fourth. Dominic Keegan with his tenth of the season. Spencer Jones with his second this year. We haven't seen a run scored outside the long ball so far this weekend. Pretty, pretty remarkable. Ole Miss had the two home runs last night. Vanderbilt had the solo shot from Isaiah Thomas. All five runs today for Vanderbilt via the long ball. Off speed for strike one to Tate Colwick. Colwick struck out swinging to start the third inning. Colwick, a guy that missed some time with an injury out at second base. He made a couple of just fantastic plays at second last night. Today is 28th start of the year, 30th game in which he's played. Well-placed fastball there by Diamond. A good frame by Dunhurst on the 0-2. Up the middle for Vanderbilt is not as good. Them in Arkansas, it's I mean, just dynamic. Defensive, dynamic defensively up the middle. 
It was on full display yesterday, that's for sure. Two balls and two strikes to Tate Colwick. Strike three called. Colwick goes away looking. That's the seventh strikeout of the game. But a couple of home runs in the top of the fourth for Vanderbilt. First, it was Dominic Keegan. And one over the left center field wall. That made it three to nothing. And then full extension from Spencer Jones. Two runs. The deep right center field. Vanderbilt, five to nothing as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Vanderbilt puts a four spot on the board in the top of the fourth inning with a pair of two run home runs. Five runs on three hits for the Commodores. Ole Miss, no runs on one hit. That one runs inside and grazes the jersey of Kevin Graham. He's hit by the pitch. That is the second HBP of the game for Jack Leiter. And for the third time in four innings, Ole Miss has the leadoff man on base. Might have been able to erase those leadoff hitters pretty quickly, but Eventually, good offenses make you pay for something like that. And I think if you're Ole Miss, you're going to have to find a way to scratch something on the board and answer that four spot. Ground ball, right side. Backhanded by the first baseman to second to for one to first, not quite in time. Dunhurst just beat it out. Jack Leiter maybe a hair late getting there, but. Yeah, you see Leiter there kind of hesitated after you saw Keegan pick that ground ball up and almost turned a really difficult double play there. But again, Leiter gets that leadoff guy on and also races another one pretty quickly. Keegan did a nice job there, backhanding a ball. He played right on the edge of the grass. See Vanderbilt in the fourth, fifth, and sixth has really pulled away from teams. They put four runs on the board here in the fourth today. It's not a good sign if you're Ole Miss. We haven't quite hit the sixth inning yet. You see that 48 to 16 advantage in the sixth. That number was entering today. So Vanderbilt now 136 runs in the fourth, fifth, and sixth. Justin Bench at the plate, flew out to right his first time up. A pretty stress-free 42 pitches so far for Jack Leiter. Walked the first man of the game, Jacob Gonzalez, on four pitches, but then got a double play and a three-pitch strikeout. He hit Dunhurst to start the second inning, and then got fly out in a couple of strikeouts. A couple of outs before Gonzalez got a single in the third, and then Chatagne struck out, and then hit by pitch fielder's choice here in the fourth inning. Ninety seven mile per hour fastball. That is a three pitch strikeout of Justin Bench for the second out of the inning. That's the highest velo we've seen today. Yeah, that was just absolute power. Kind of Jack Leiter. We talked about how he can run it up on the radar gun right there. I think you're starting to see him really settle in and you might see that velocity continue to sit in that upper 90 range as he continues to heat up. Kantz takes off speed for strike one and falls behind in the count. Jim Kantz struck out swinging his first time up in the second inning. Talking about the last two outings for Jack Leiter. Kind of elevates 96 running away from McCants there. April 24th against Mississippi State, 96 pitches in five innings. And then 93 pitches in four innings against Florida. Prior to those two outings, he had had five straight outings where he had gone over 100 pitches. And I think the concern last week was maybe it was just a little worn out. It gave him the week off. There was little question earlier in the week as to whether or not Jack Leiter was going to pitch this week. 
clearly the decision to run him out looking pretty good right now. He's been very sharp. No question. Check swing. McCants unable to hold up. That is another strikeout. Now seven in the game for Leiter and Ole Miss trailing five to nothing. We go to the fifth. Two weeks from today, we will be playing semifinal Saturday at the SEC Baseball Tournament in Hoover, Alabama. Coming into today, this is what it would have looked like. First day, single elimination games, Ole Miss LSU, South Carolina, Kentucky, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, Auburn. See the number one overall seed would be Arkansas, followed by Tennessee, and then Vanderbilt, and then Mississippi State. A lot of baseball to play, though, and a lot that can change between now and then. Nine-hole hitter Troy Leneve leading things off for Vanderbilt. And the top of the fifth inning with the Commodores leading at 5-0 over Ole Miss. Leneve fouls that one off. Count even to the ball and a strike. It's a big inning for Diamond, not just for where we are in today's game. You know, if you're Ole Miss, you're down five nothing in, here in the top of the fifth, but you also got to think about tomorrow as well. So if Diamond's able to maybe scratch together another inning or two, it really sets up Mike Bianco's bullpen a lot better. Fly ball to right field. This one's pretty well hit, and Vanderbilt has done it again, this time with the nine-hole hitter, Troy Leneve, his third home run of the season. Fourth long ball of the game for the Commodores. This one a solo shot, and Vandy leads it 6-0. You'll see Leneve take this breaking ball. Another home run hit off the breaking ball. Watch this ball down and in. Just takes that, drops a head on it, drives it out to right center. Vandy continuing to punish the baseball here today. Now 6-0 the Commodores. They've got six runs on four hits. Bradfield shows bunt, fielded by Baker. Forget about it. He can absolutely fly. And once that ball gets past Diamond, there's no shot. Yeah, and you saw hesitation there. Diamond kind of went for the ball first, and Baker almost gave it a stutter step and then decided to go. And after that point, there's just no chance. Your best opportunity is to let, as you said, let Diamond field that, and hopefully he's able to get it out of his glove quickly. But really nice job there by Bradfield to follow up the home run with a bunt single. Commodores leading 6-0 with Enrique Bradfield Jr. at first base. Second time he's been on today. He was caught stealing by Dunhurst back in the first inning. Not only the top base dealer in the SEC, but in the entire country. Pitch misses outside for ball one to Carter Young. Including last night, eight of the last nine games in the SEC, a successful stolen base for Bradfield. Yeah, there are two parts to the whole stealing base thing. One, you've got to be fast and get good jumps and all that good stuff. But the other, you got to get on base. And he just gets on base a ton. It's on base all the time. Yeah, it doesn't matter how fast you are if you can't. Get to first base and show off the opportunity to run. Very impressive player here for Tim Corbin's team, there's no doubt. Two balls and no strikes to Carter Young. This is a guy that's got plenty of pop in his bat. 13 home runs on the year. Eight of his 13 have come in SEC play.
Six runs, five hits for Vanderbilt. Ole Miss, no runs, one hit. Belongs to Jacob Gonzalez off of Jack Leiter. Pitching on a couple of weeks rest. And he has been dominant. Tyler Myers, right-hander for Ole Miss, throwing in the bullpen. And a four-pitch walk to Carter Young. Three straight reach base safely for Vanderbilt here in the top of the fifth inning. A solo home run by Leneve in the nine hole. A bunt single by Bradfield, and now Carter Young draws the walk. So see Mike, how long Mike Bianco sticks with Derek Don. I was going to say, it looks like they're going to stick with him here for Keegan. It looks like Don, I mean, you start to see some laboring out there, and just looks like he's losing the feel for the stuff. 82 pitches today for Derek Diamond working in the Top of the fifth inning. He's got Bradfield at second, Young at first, and now Dominic Keegan at the plate, who hit his 10th home run of the year earlier in the game. That's ball at 89. Velocity down a little bit for Derek Diamond as well. Yeah, in the first couple innings you saw Diamond Sitting around that 92, 93, but he was bumping to 96 on several occasions, and so far this inning it's really been around 89, 90. Probably the two best base runners on the team for Vanderbilt on the paths right now with Bradfield at second base and Young at first. Right, nips the outside corner. It's 0-2 now to Dominic Keegan. And Young over at first base with Baker playing behind him. You see him getting a really aggressive lead, just keeping an eye on Bradfield just to see if he takes off. Because if you see Bradfield take off, he's going to immediately take off for second. See how far he is off at first base, and he's basically just keeping an eye on the guy at second. Pick. Playing out to second base. Chatagne had the ball pop out of his glove. Yeah, and you saw Chatagne really shoot in there. You saw him show his hand, which is the signal the pitcher just go ahead and turn on the pick play. Bradley really wasn't too far off the bag at that time. Nobody out, top of the fifth. The 0-2 to Keegan. There's a foul down the right field line. Long run for Leatherwood. It's into the seats. and Maybe just as well that that one's out of play because if Leatherwood catches that, Bradfield is standing on third base. Young may be on second, too. Uh, that would have been a difficult play, but, yeah. Super Diamond goes now. Went with the 0-2 fastball. He did get... Keegan on a fastball on his first it be on an AB on an 0-2 count, but then Keegan punished the curveball down. See if they try to elevate or maybe curveball off the plate. Fastball inside and that missed for ball one. Not yet gotten started in Gainesville with game two between Georgia and Florida. Auburn leading Texas A&M 9-8 in the top of the seventh inning. 1-2 pitch, fouled back. Let's see where he goes now. Moved, tried to move him off the plate, went back with the off speed. The 
One, two. Lifted to center field. McCants on the run. He gets to the warning track, and he makes the catch against the wall. Both runners will tag and move up a base. The way Vanderbilt's been swinging the bat today, you just didn't know that one to the deepest part of the park. And McCants able to haul it in. Keegan almost did it the exact same way. That ball just missed getting out by a few feet, but got a curveball down and really went down and got it. Drove that ball to center. Nice play by McCants. Really good base running there by Vanderbilt. Yeah, guys, two guys in scoring position. And Mike Bianco will head out to the mound and will likely make a pitching change here with one out. In the top of the fifth inning, he makes the signal to the bullpen. Derek Diamond, four and a third. Five hits, six earned runs. All six of those runs came via the long ball. Couple of two-run shots, couple of solo shots. Vanderbilt, six. Ole Miss, nothing. We'll be right back. Tyler Myers into the game for Ole Miss. First arm out of the bullpen on this Saturday afternoon with Vanderbilt leading Six to nothing over the Rebels. Ole Miss leading a game to none in the series. 17th appearance of the year for Tyler Myers. Three and one, 463 ERA. He was part of the Senior Day festivities earlier today. I think it stands out in his line is the 26 strikeouts and only two walks. Yeah, absolutely. And the guy's really worked his way back into the to the mix as the years progressed. Wasn't much of a factor early on, but. He said the numbers are good on the strikeouts and walks. Really a two-pitch guy. Really lives off the curveball and the fastball. And fastball's going to hover right around 90-92. For him, there's twofold. If you're Ole Miss, you need Tyler Myers to come in and try to get you out of this inning with limited damage. But after that, it's just eating innings. So that way you can throw the kitchen sink at Vanderbilt in the rubber match tomorrow. Derek Diamond goes four and a third. Five hits allowed, six earned runs. Walked four and struck out seven. We see him talking to Mike Bianco. And, you know, I think there was a lot of positives for Derek Diamond. I thought the fastball early on was good. I thought he was sharp early. And then really once he hit about 60 pitches or so, really started to labor. And Vanderbilt really made him pay. And you wonder just the time in the bullpen and not having the extended outings over the last month or so where it maybe affected him down the stretch today. But you know, credit Vanderbilt, they really punished a lot of those curveballs that were left up, even some that were down in the zone. So Ole Miss trying to keep Vanderbilt right where they are. Commodores in a really good spot in this game, leading six to nothing with Jack Leiter on the mound. He's got a low pitch count through four innings and has been locked in. He's given up only one hit today. C.J. Rodriguez 0 for 2 with a pop out to the catcher and a fly out to center, and he takes a breaking ball for strike one. Ole Miss will leave the defense back with the exception of Baker at first base, but Bradfield's speed, even infield in, anything down angle, he's probably going to score anyway. First base side, that one will go into the stands. That's the one you want to catch, the one that hits the concrete and then you get it on the secondary bounce. Yeah, but he still made a play, one-handed grab. Let's play, young man. Time, Cale Baker, plenty of room. Boy, Bradfield makes you think. <laughs> he took off on a dead sprint for about four strides. I think Baker was like, you serious? <laughs> he came up thinking he was going to have to make a play at the plate. But, I mean, that's good baseball by Bradfield. I mean, you just never know sometimes guys on a ball like that just pop up in the infield maybe just for, you know, you would never think a guy would be taking off. And then all of a sudden, Make sure that you're ready to come up throwing. We see 
I mean, I'm going to be honest. I kind of wanted to see it just to see how close it would be at the plate. It's about a third of the way down the baseline right now, too. Breaking ball in on the hands of Nolan for strike one. Parker Nolan 0 for 1 today. Struck out looking in the second inning. He walked and scored in the fourth on the two-run homer from Spencer Jones. Nolan trying to extend the inning and extend the lead for Vanderbilt. Commodore's up 6-0. Four home runs in the game for Vanderbilt. In SEC play, Vanderbilt came in fourth in the league in home runs with 33, so they're up to 37 now on the year. Bradfield at third, Young at second. 1-1. One, one. Now 1-2. One and two. All up, and Nolan got a piece of it. Put a good swing on that fastball, elevated up in the zone. Big pitch coming here now for Tyler Myers. Got Nolan on a 2-2 fastball earlier in the day and worked a full count walk. The next set bat to see. He just went with the fastball up in the zone. You think her ball down? See where the Rebels go here. To the left, Kevin Graham should have a play. Makes the catch in fair territory for the third out of the inning. Vanderbilt strands a couple. Commodores get another solo home run and lead it 6-0. Welcome to the weekend, everybody. Time to play some baseball. Doesn't get any better than this. Let's have some fun, everybody. Wow, great baseball. When it comes down to nine innings, you leave it all in the field. You lose, you go home, you win, you go to Omaha. That's the goal for every college baseball team. Vanderbilt, a couple of national championships in recent years in Omaha. The NCAA released the 20 potential host sites for regionals. A lot of SEC flavor in there with Arkansas and Florida and Mississippi State and Ole Miss, along with South Carolina, Tennessee, and Vanderbilt. Uh, the experts thinking that Ole Miss some work to do over the final two weeks to be one of those 16 host sites. Only two teams out of the ACC, Pittsburgh and Notre Dame. Talked to Kyle Peterson a while yesterday. And he had some pretty strong words. Not in a malicious way, but just thought that it was a really bad idea for the NCAA, especially with some of the news that we've seen in recent days with the CDC uh, changing some of their guidance for masks and what the virus has done. He said that he thought maybe the NCAA should have just called an audible and said, no, we're going to wait. But you wanted to be one of those 20. It gives you a chance. Vanderbilt a lock to be a host, and I don't think there's any doubt that the Commodores are going to be one of the top eight seeds giving them the chance to host a Super Regional as well. Leatherwood chased one in the dirt. Rodriguez has to throw it down to first, does so in time for the first out of the inning. That's three straight strikeouts now for Jack Leiter. Yeah, and that, that was just filthy pitching there by Leiter. You saw a couple off-speed pitches there to get 0-2. Shows the heat, goes right back to that. Slider down in the dirt. Nice job by Rodriguez to block that one up. See Vandy fifth in the RPI, 27th in strength of schedule. Looking today for their 17th win in SEC play. Commodores will close out the regular season at home next weekend against Kentucky. This ball hammered, foul down the third baseline by Cale Baker. That's only the second ball that's been barreled up today by Ole Miss. You had the Rodriguez hit out into right field. That's only the second swing today where Ole Miss has hit one square. 
Yeah, Baker found himself in a good count last at bat, too, and Wider got him to pop up. So go back to that curveball there. Fans don't like it, but it's a really good 1 1 pitch. Mike Bianco didn't like it either. One more look. Maybe down. The 1 2. Popped up behind home plate. Rodriguez gets to the edge of the net, and Cale Baker will have another opportunity. Look at Ole Miss sitting there at nine in the RPI, 22 in strength of schedule, 15 SEC wins. It feels like if the Rebels can get two more in the league, get to 17 in SEC play, that should be good enough. Check swing, called third strike. That's four straight strikeouts now for Jack Leiter. Two to end the fourth and two to start the fifth. He is dialed in. Yeah, it, everything he's throwing right now is sharp and with purpose. Yeah, for Ole Miss, you know, I, I think if – Obviously, if they're able to come back today or, or win tomorrow, they're putting themselves in a great spot going on the road at Georgia. As you said, you really might feel like you only need one, but if you ever go to Athens and pick up two or three, I mean, you feel like you'd still be in great shape. It'd be as good as the league is this year. It'd be difficult to deny a team with 17, 18 wins in the league. Well, the thing... So many people have talked about the fact that you know Ole Miss has lost five of six series in the SEC. And my question is, okay, is it about whether or not you win or lose a series or the number of wins you've got and who the wins came against? Yeah, no doubt. And, and for Ole Miss, they, they've lost so many close league games. It's There's been very few blowouts to begin with, so... You know, if you like just a hit or two there or a defensive play here, a pitch or two there, you know, the resume looks totally different in general. But I agree with you. I'm sure it matters how you get there. They've never denied a host of that number of wins before. So, Strike two now to Calvin Harris. Takes the fastball in the outside corner and is behind to the count one and two. Nine strikeouts so far for Jack Leiter through four and two-thirds. This is his 60th pitch of the game. And make it five in a row and ten in the game. Jack Leiter strikes out the side. Vanderbilt in control, leading six to nothing through five. Magic number for an SEC team to get into the postseason is 16, 100% of the time. 16 uh, win SEC teams or more have made the SEC tournament. You see it's highly likely at 15, get down to 13, 36% of the time that's happened. We've had a few occasions where 12 wins have been good enough to get a team into the postseason. Tyler Myers starting things off against Isaiah Thomas and drops in strike one. Vanderbilt leading 6-0 over Ole Miss. Six runs, five hits for the Commodores. Ole Miss no runs on one hit. Single from Jacob Gonzalez off of Jack Leiter, who has 10 strikeouts today. There's a swing and a miss for strike two to Thomas. Tyler Myers came in in relief for Derek Diamond. Got a pop out and a fly out to end the fifth inning and strand a couple of runners at second and third for the Commodores. The 0-2 to Isaiah Thomas. This one way outside for ball one. Myers did a really great job coming in and getting out of that jam for Ole Miss just to keep it at a six-run game. And, and just like we said when he came in, his job is just try to hold serve, keep the team in it. And if you're Ole Miss's offense, you just got to try to find a way to get lighter out of the ball game. Obviously, much easier said than done. Vanderbilt has some guys moving around in the bullpen. Nobody throwing yet. Out beyond the left field wall. When you wonder if given
call it just inning management from the scratch start last week. You wonder if Coach Corbin had lighter coming in on some type of pitch count, is what you're alluding to with the guys moving around out there. One, two to Thomas. Popped into foul territory. That one's going to drift into the seats. She gets the foul ball, but she might just assume the guy behind her catches it. <laughs> I was going to say, you got to make a play on that one. We saw a nice one-handed snag on the bounce, but in that opportunity, you got to get a chance to shine. You got to make a play no matter where you're at in the stadium. Ground ball left side. That's a base hit past the diving Justin Bench at third base. And that is the first non-home run hit of the game for Vanderbilt. That's not right. They also had the bunt single from Bradfield. Second non-home run hit of the game for the Commodores. First non-home run single to leave the, the infield. But, I mean, at that point, <clears throat> if you're Thomas, you know, I feel like, man, it's not a trend. I guess he already got the bomb on the day, too. But got to break the ball up there in a two-strike count. Did a good job putting it through the hole there on the left side. Here's six-foot, seven-inch. Spencer Jones hit a two-run home run in his last hit bat in the fourth inning. One for two today, also a strikeout. Squares to bunt and takes strike one. You hit a ball that almost to Nashville. You square around a bunt your next time up. But again, in the DNA of this, this team for Vanderbilt, very unselfish baseball, that goes without saying. Isaiah Thomas, another guy that runs well for Vanderbilt. He's nine out of nine in stolen bases. So you got Bradfield, who's 39 of 43. And then both Isaiah Thomas and Car uh, Carter Young, nine for nine. See where Myers goes now with the count even. Jones hit a fastball a mile. It's last at bat. Foul back, and it's one and two. Fastball that time from Myers at 90 miles an hour. Yeah, good location. Jones hit that fastball. It was basically down and in, and he just crushed it. One was well placed by Myers. One two to Jones. Throw to first for the pitch to the plate. In on the hands, fielded by Baker. He'll go to second, not in time. Poor decision that time by Cale Baker. Got to take the easy out at first base. He's not hit terribly sharply. No, anytime you got to charge a ball like that, plus you're bodying it up and it, with the idea of spinning to throw the guy out of second, you just got to eat that ball, take the quick out at first base, and move on. Spencer Jones reaches on the fielder's choice. No error charged on the play, but a mental error there for Cale Baker. Vanderbilt's got first and second with nobody out. And Tate Colwick coming to the plate. 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. Kind of anticipate that Colwick will be bunting here. Bunts at third base side, fielded by Bench. Chatagne covering it first. And then a throw across as Isaiah Thomas had to kind of scramble on his belly back to the bag at third. He took a couple hard steps towards the plate and started stumbling. That was good heads-up baseball by Chatagne, who 
did a nice job sprinting over from second base to cover. So Ole Miss was on bunt defense crash there. Sacrifice bunt that time for Colwick. Moves Thomas to third and Jones to second. Now it's Leneve in the nine hole. We've had a solo home run in the fifth inning, third of the year. Picked up his seventh RBI. Looking for a base hit to allow Vanderbilt to extend the lead. Commodores up six zip in this game. This ball lifted to right field, and that one's going to fall in front of Leatherwood. Will allow a run to come home to score. And it's now 7 to nothing, an RBI single for Troy Leneve. Good game today for Leneve. Yeah, and he gets another breaking ball and down and in. You see him just kind of hesitate right there, just uses his hands and kind of slaps that ball into right field. Vanderbilt continues to extend this lead. Nice piece of hitting there by Leneve. Just the third start of the year for Lenny. Pretty good production out of the nine hole. Two for three with a couple of runs batted in. And now back to the top of the order and Enrique Bradfield. One for two. Walk and a bunt single to strike out. And Bradfield shows bunt and takes strike one. Bench was charging there. I was just thinking this, this is a perfect opportunity. Vanderbilt really just wants to take another run. So there's no chance you're going to double up Bradfield. If he puts down one in any location, it's going to be a rough. safety squeeze. Yeah, a little safety squeeze. But Jones was way down the line. Bench was basically following him in for a bunt. And had he been back, that would have been an easy pick by Dunhurst. Side for ball one to Bradfield. Talked about it at the outset in game twos this year. Over the course of the season, Vanderbilt eight and three. Well, this was ten and one coming into today. And again, a big break off of third base from Spencer Jones. They went with the appeal and said ball two. Bradfield got the bat back. Dunhurst pretty animated on that one, too. He definitely held up. Justin Bench at third base playing even with the bag. And Cale Baker at first holding the runner. Obviously double play depth in the middle. Bradfield has been doubled up one time this season. Ooh. And an out at third base. So a pickoff from Tyler Myers. A little bit different defensive philosophy that time. Tim Corbin. Having a conversation with the third base umpire, Dupree, perhaps wanting a balk. I don't know if he's talking about Bench maybe blocking the bag, but that play right there, that's something that either was called from the dugout or Bench and Myers. You, know, you kind of give your guy a look and just say, hey, when we talked about how far Jones was off earlier in that at bat, but you rarely see a pickoff attempt like that. An extended conversation. He was set. I think maybe the only question that Tim Corbin would have is whether or not the knee kind of came back across that plane. Yeah, you just really don't see that too often. Let's see. You see Bench basically blocking the back. Bench, who is not six foot seven. Boxing out the big man there at third base. 
Now two and two on the pitch that was fouled away. So a big pickoff over at third base of Spencer Jones. For the second out of the inning. And again, I think the argument that Tim Corbin was making was that that was a balk move from Tyler Myers. Wow. Half the Ole Miss, I won't even say half. I think every infielder was a couple steps in the dugout after that. That's a great pitch. Maybe a touch inside, but a yeah. terrific two-strike pitch there by Myers. And you get the frame from Dunhurst. He kind of pulls that one back into the outside corner. Pitch missed, but maybe a ball inside. Full count pitch. Laneve goes with the pitch. It's up and away, and that's a walk to Bradfield. So, again, two base runners for Vanderbilt, but with two outs in the inning. And the always dangerous Carter Young. Been on base twice, couple of walks today. Flew out his first time up, so 0 for 1 officially. Carter Young leads Vanderbilt with his 13 home runs. Well, he's fooled badly on that pitch for strike one. Good depth there on that first pitch fastball. Young was looking for something else, that swing, but job by Myers to get ahead. Two outs in the inning. Leneve at second, Bradfield at first. Young has just been in good counts all day. Was in a 2-1 count, flew out to center, three-run count, worked it to a walk, and walked in his last A-B as well. Been seeing in that first swing, seeing the ball well today, even with no hits. Comes up empty there on the breaking ball. It's one and two now. It's a good block there by Dunhurst. We've seen two really good breaking balls by Myers in this at bat with just really good depth. Ball, two strikes, two outs. A couple of runners on for Vanderbilt. Commodore's leading it seven to nothing. Being able to foul it off to stay alive at the plate. Good pitch there by Myers and a good job by Young to stay alive. Nobody in the Ole Miss bullpen. It's one of those situations where you're just going to have to get several innings out of one of your guys to set up well for the rest of the day, but then as we keep saying, tomorrow as well. Back pick there by Myers. Who'd you have winning the uh, Preakness, by the way? Is that guy, is that horse running that was uh, steroided up? <laughs> yes, Medina that Spirit one? did run. That's right. Did not win. Ah, okay. Ron Bauer, your winner with Midnight Bourbon finishing second, and Medina Spirit fading down the stretch to finish third. The one two. Now two and two. As you could tell, I'm not a huge horse racing guy, even though I do watch occasionally. But Midnight Bourbon would have been the one that I go with from a name standpoint. That one sounds like a winner to me. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. 
Tyler Myers trying to get out of the sixth inning. It's a number up the first base line, and it's going to run foul. Steady dose of breaking balls here to Young from Myers. See if he tries to mix it up, or, Myers, or uh, Young's really not been able to get a great swing on that breaking ball. See if they continue to go back to that, or maybe try to get him to chase one up. We'll do it again with 2-2 two -two count and two down in the inning. Pitch runs inside for ball three, and now a full count to Carter Young. Another close pitch inside that Dunhurst tried to frame back in and get the call third strike from Matthew Wilbanks, the home plate umpire. Did not get the call. The runners will be moving with this pitch for Vanderbilt. Leneve out at second, Bradfield at first. Full count pitch, swing and a miss. Big strike out there for Tyler Myers as Vanderbilt strands a couple. The Commodores carry a 7-0 lead into the bottom of the sixth. Jack Leiter has been in control, 60 pitches. And he has been a strikeout machine today for the Vanderbilt Commodores. 10 strikeouts, one walk, couple of hit batters, only one hit allowed. That was to Jacob Gonzalez. Back in the third inning with a couple of outs. Last three outings, you see the ERA for Jack Leiter over seven. He'd given up 15 hits with eight strikeouts. Today, 10 strikeouts. And the crazy number is the home runs. Eight home runs allowed in the last three outings for Jack Leiter. There's a swing and a miss for Gonzalez. Count goes to one and one. Gave up three long balls to Tennessee in Knoxville, two to Mississippi State in Nashville, and three in Gainesville. Difference in the game last night was a couple of home runs for Ole Miss. That has not been the case today. Only one hit, a single from this guy, Jacob Gonzalez. Yeah, the fast bar's been working. We've seen it really right around that 90. 395 range, but he's bumped it to 97 a few times. The curveballs had good depth. The sliders had really good bite. So the change up as well. Two and two now to Gonzalez. You know, Matt, the, the thing is, it's an Ole Miss offense that is plenty capable of a big inning, couple of big innings. But I'm not sure you're going to get that off of Jack Leiter. Feels like the Rebels have got to figure out a way to get into the Vanderbilt bullpen as that pitch misses and the count goes full now to Gonzalez. Yeah, Gonzalez he... walked on four pitches to start the ball game. Three leadoff guys and a couple hit by pitches, about the only blemish on the day for Jack Leiter. And there's a walk. So Jacob Gonzalez has been on base all three times today for Ole Miss. A walk in the first, a single in the third, and a walk here to start the sixth inning. I mean, you really want to see anybody else in the ball game other than Jack Leiter if you're Ole Miss right now, but before you can try to get him out of the ball game, you have got to try to get him in situations with stressful pitches. 60 pitches coming in this inning. He has just been in cruise control. I'm going to try to get some pressure on him and see if you can't get the bullpen up and running. Swing and a miss, 94 mile an hour fastball there. Shot and yay. Grounded into a double play on the first pitch he saw in the first inning. He struck out looking in the third inning. The 0 1 coming to Chatagne. Bounces in the dirt, and Gonzalez is going to get down to second base. That ended up being pretty close as Rodriguez was able to pick it up cleanly. Wasn't sure initially that he was even going to make a throw, and then. Not sure Gonzalez did either. I mean, he was running down the line, but that ball was a, the play was a lot closer than it probably needed to be. But good job there 
by Rodriguez. You saw him block it up where the ball fell right in front of him. A good DBR read there by, by Gonzalez. On a strike now with Gonzalez out at second base. Foul tip held on to by Rodriguez. All in two strikes now to Chatagne. Gonzalez is the first man to get to second base today for Ole Miss. One two pitch runs inside. Slider went with the fastball there. He was able to get. Chatagne on a 2-2 slider. That was basically a backup slider. Chatagne didn't like the call earlier in the ball game. We'll see if he goes back to that hard slider or maybe tries to go back to that heater. 2-2 Two -two pitch lifted off the end of the bat to shallow left. Late break there for Laniv. And Gonzalez not able to move up. He had to kind of freeze. And then he took a step back towards second as opposed to being able to advance. So first and second with nobody out for Ole Miss, second hit of the game for the Rebels. Yeah, obviously a tough read there by Gonzalez, and I think the way that Lenny came in for that ball looked like he had a beat on it and just came up short. But this now was something working with Kevin Graham coming to the plate. Kevin Graham, a guy that could certainly make this game more interesting with one swing of the bat. And he takes ball one away. Kevin Graham with a solo home run last night, his 11th of the year. He's been on base once, hit by a pitch in the fourth inning, struck out back in the first. Gonzalez at second, Chatagne at first. Now 2-0. in the last half inning. Vanderbilt had some guys moving around in the bullpen. Nobody on the mound throwing yet for the Commodores. 72 pitches in the game for Jack Leiter. He's got a 7-0 lead. And it's now 3-0 to Kevin Graham. So you want to coach baseball, right? 7-0 lead to you. Green light. Your best swing, your best hitter on a 3 0 count with a guy with an electric fastball. Pitch misses a four pitch walk to Kevin Graham. And so now the bases are loaded with nobody out for Ole Miss in the sixth inning. Couple of walks, leadoff walk, and a Single that fell in front of Laniv out in left field, and then Kevin Graham, a four-pitch walk. Rodriguez goes out to talk to Leiter. And now the Commodores with some action in the bullpen. That's Hunter Owen, the left-hander, throwing. And also Chris McElvain. Hayden Dunhurst, he's been on base twice, hit by a pitch in the second, reached on a fielder's choice in the fourth. That's with the bases loaded and nobody out. And he's late on the fastball at 94. Pretty much an ocean over there to hit into on the left side with Young playing pretty much right next to the bag. Outside for ball one. Leiter seems to have lost a little bit of feel for the breaking ball. He's kind of missed up and away with that pitch. To Graham and now to Dunhurst. Two and one now to Hayden Dunhurst. Justin Bench waits on deck for Ole Miss. Rebels trying to knock the goose egg off the board, trailing seven to nothing. Right. 
Now three and one. Coming into this inning, Jack Leiter had given up one hit. He had hit two batters, and he had walked a batter. Walk, single, walk to start the sixth inning. And the Ole Miss crowd, big crowd today. Really for the first time all day, something to cheer about. The 3-1. Big cut on a 95-mile-an-hour fastball from Hayden Dunhurst. Might have chased ball four. Yeah, that was a 3-1. You're looking for one pitch, one spot. Dunhurst looking for a fastball in that situation and chase one up. See if Lauder goes back to the heater. He did. Back-to-back 95-mile-an-hour fastballs. He gets Dunhurst to swing through both of them. That is a huge strikeout. The 11th of the game for Jack Leiter. Yeah, and really a gift. Leiter's been outstanding all day. And field's been lost a little bit there. Dunhurst swung at a couple ball fours there. but And, Matt, you talked about it earlier. High spin rate fastball, so he's got the velocity, and that fastball stays on plane. Absolutely. And you just saw Dunhurst, he tried it in that last, that 3 2 pitch. He really tried to cut the swing down and hit the other way. He's just unable to catch up with it. Justin Bench, that's three 95 mile an hour fastballs in a row from Jack Leiter, trying to bear down here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Walk, single walk, bases loaded, nobody out. Strikeout of Dunhurst. This one is popped. Shallow right field. Colwick, the second baseman, makes the catch. He'll throw toward the plate. They're now two down. And Jack Leiter, one out away from wiggling off the hook here in the bottom of the sixth. It's got to be nice to be able to try to get yourself out of a jam with a fastball like Leiter has. And so I'm really blow the door da doors down on Dunhurst with those elevated fastballs. And that fastball in on bench just tied him completely up. T.J. McCants. No stranger to bases loaded situations in big spots. Hans takes strike one outside corner. And after four straight fastballs in the mid 90s, he goes off speed to McCants to start the at bat. to back breaking balls to T.J. McCants, and he's ahead 0-2, and, and now Leiter a pitch away from getting out of a bases loaded jam with no outs. In the sixth inning of a game that Vanderbilt leads 7 to nothing. Pitch gets away, and that's going to allow a run to come home to school. McCants, that was actually a called third strike on a check swing. He gets down to first on a strikeout wild pitch. Gonzalez comes home to score. Jotnier goes to third. And very fortunate. You'll see McCants here just kind of unsure of whether that was strike three or if he was called strike three. And Rodriguez unable to really pick it up on the first time. You saw a reaction there from Leiter because he really had himself out of the jam there. But a big... Big opportunity for Ole Miss and a gift really there. So that goes down as the 12th strikeout of the game, but it's a strikeout wild pitch. Gonzalez came home to score. Ole Miss is on the board trailing 7-1 to one and looking for a two-out base hit from Hayden Leatherwood. He swings through a fastball for strike one. Couple of wild pitches in the inning from Jack Leiter. He's up to 85 pitches in the game. Leatherwood fouls it off third base side, and he's behind in the count 0 2. We've seen Leiter get Leatherwood twice in different situations here so far today. Got him on a fastball, his first AB, and then a slider down, wick slider down. See where he goes now 0 2. Outside with a fastball. Yeah. 
Six of seven home runs for Leatherwood have come in SEC play. He's off the breaking ball. The count evens at two and two now to Hayden Leatherwood. He's 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts, both swinging today. Fastball has bailed him out here in this inning. He threw a nasty breaking ball down just a second ago. So you think you might go back fastball here up in the zone. He does. It's an elevated fastball. He gets a swing and a miss at 96 miles per hour. It could have been a whole lot worse for Jack Leiter in the sixth inning. Ole Miss misses an opportunity. They get one run on a strikeout wild pitch. Leatherwood chased ball three. It's seven to one. Ole Miss gets on the board in the bottom of the sixth inning with a single run. Had the bases loaded with nobody out, and it took a wild pitch strikeout with two down in the inning to allow Jacob Gonzalez to come home and score. Jack Leiter now 13 strikeouts in the game. He's walked three and has given up just two hits. Tyler Myers back on the mound for Ole Miss, dealing with Dominic Keegan to start things off in the top of the seventh, and he misses for ball one. Check swing strike to Keegan. The count goes to one and one. For the seventh time this year, Ole Miss has drawn over 10,000 for a game. 10,267 the attendance. In game two between the Rebels and the Commodores, that was on the heels of 89-86 last night. Crowd here was ready to explode there if Leatherwood or Dunhurst was able to connect with one, but really good job by Leiter. Went back to the bread and butter on the fastball, and just so difficult to lay off those pitches up in the zone. You know, when you see guys swing at those, you go, oh, well, it's up at their eyes, but out of the hand, it looks like it's coming almost chest high where you might be able to get on top of it by the time you decided to swing. It's already by up higher than that. 3-1 pitch lined into left, a base hit for Dominic Keegan. That is his second hit of the ball game, and Vanderbilt has the leadoff man on here in the seventh. Good piece of hitting there. See this fastball just right there, up and over the plate. Just hands through the zone, drives that ball in the left field, and Keegan's had a very good day here at the ballpark. Eighth hit for the Commodores, certainly a hitter's count there at three and one. You're looking for a fastball. And when you get one center cut like that, you don't want to miss it. Keegan Ooh. did not. That one runs up and in, and it hits C.J. Rodriguez. And now Ole Miss has action in the bullpen. Brandon Johnson, the right-hander, is up and throwing. Yeah, and obviously this will play into, we'll see Mike Bianco coming out to talk to Myers. Obviously, plays into the decision-making side of things for Vanderbilt. You know, if they're able to add a couple runs, do you go ahead and take Leiter out, keep the workload down, or see how far you can extend him out? Tyler Myers inning at two-thirds, three hits allowed. He's given up the one run, has a walk and a strikeout, and has now hit a batter. And he's done, a, he's done a pretty good job. Came into a situation with second, third, and was able to get out of it. Worked out of a pretty big jam the next half. We'll see how Vanderbilt plays it here with Nolan at the plate. Another good opportunity to lay a bunt down. Back to the sixth inning, the walk to Bradfield was only the third of the season by Tyler Myers. He is a strike thrower. Tyler Myers making his 40th career appearance. He has never walked more than one batter in an outing. Rebels expecting bunt here from Parker Noland. They've got Justin Bench in at third. Hale Baker in at first. And a first pitch strike to Nolan.
electing not to bunt there. And a good job by Myers to get 0-1. That was a good 0-1 breaking ball there. Kale Baker now taking a few steps back. He had been ahead of the base runner, Rodriguez, at first base. With the bunt off those first two pitches, you see him step back and hopes of potentially turning a double play. Vanderbilt with first and second and nobody out, leading 7-1 to one in the top of the seventh inning. Commodores have gotten it done with the long ball today. Four home runs in the game for Vanderbilt. A couple of solo home runs, a couple of two-run home runs. A solo shot from Isaiah Thomas in the second inning, a pair of two-run home runs from Keegan and Jones in the fourth inning, and a solo home run from Troy Leneve. The other run the Commodores scored came on an RBI single from Leneve in the sixth. Seven runs, eight hits for Vanderbilt, a run on two hits for Ole Miss. 3-1 pitch, lifted to left. Kevin Graham on the run, still on the run, and that ball is gone. A three-run homer for Parker Noland. Vanderbilt's fifth long ball of the day, and the Commodores lead it 10-1. The Bandy boys have brought the lumber today. This one, Apo Taco variety. See that fastball? I mean, just really good location and a great swing there by Nolan. And for a three-run fastball where you have to come at him, he throws that one really on the outside part, and Nolan just takes it the other way. The hit parade has been on for the Bandy boys in gold. Well, it's such a contrast today between Vanderbilt who has just barreled up ball after ball, whether it was off of Derek Diamond or now Tyler Myers. And Ole Miss has got two hits in the game. And Mike Bianco is making a pitching change. Inning at two-thirds, four hits, four earned runs for Tyler Myers. His day is done with a walk and a strikeout. And now Brandon Johnson coming into the game. But the pitching change will take a timeout. Commodores in control, leading it by nine. Brandon Johnson making his 10th appearance of the season. No wins, no losses. The ERA sitting at four with 13 strikeouts and four walks, 10 hits allowed in nine innings this season. Johnson's going to have to come in. And if you're Mike Bianco, you'd love to see Brandon Johnson finish this game out for you. But he's going to come out these Vandy hitters who have been red hot today with a fastball that's going to sit in the mid-90s. It's really his game. See a couple off-speed pitches to go with that as well. Change up in a curveball and we'll see how he adjusts to these Vandy hitters who have been seeing everything that Ole Miss pitching has thrown at them today. Tuesday at 10 Eastern, 9 Central, SEC Inside grants you an all-access pass to the SEC softball tournament for never-before-seen footage and sounds from the semifinals and the championship game right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Here in the top of the fifth inning in Tuscaloosa, Alabama leading 3 to nothing over Florida. In the championship game, Florida is the home team, despite the game being played in Alabama's home park. First SEC appearance for Brandon Johnson, and he gives up a fly ball to center field. McCants will track that one down for the first out of the inning as Isaiah Thomas flies out and is now two for four in the game. Good fastball there by Johnson, 94. There, Thomas aggressively swinging there on the first pitch, and you see the numbers from game one to game two. And the difference is Doug Nikhazy is not back out on the mound for Ole Miss. He was outstanding yesterday, as was Taylor Broadway. Fouled back, Spencer Jones, one for three with a two-run home run. It feels like you watch any college baseball season throughout from start to finish. Brandon Johnson's a guy that hasn't gotten a ton of work, but every year it seems like there's a guy that comes in a spot, 
In this situation, it's 10 to 1. See a couple 96 mile an hour fastballs in a row. And all of a sudden, you look up down the stretch towards the end of the season, and they have become an integral part of the bullpen. And for Mike Bianco, he's still looking for an arm or two that he can go to. It's a good opportunity for Johnson. Fouled away. It's a ball and two strikes. Now to Spencer Jones. Johnson, a guy that's got the stuff that makes you think he could be a really important part of the Ole Miss bullpen. You mentioned a second ago, a couple of 96 mile an hour fastballs. 2 2. Check swing, strike three. We'll fly out in a strikeout to the first two hitters that Brandon Johnson faces. And now Tate Colwick will come to the plate with two down and the bases empty. Yeah, really good pitch there. I mean, just down in the zone. Jones unable to hold up there, but 96 down is where you want to live. And so far, so good for Brandon Johnson. Outside for ball one, one ball and one strike. Vanderbilt in control, leading it by nine, ten to one in the top of the seventh inning. Ford's got a run in the first, four in the fourth, single runs in the fifth and the sixth, and a three-run home run from Parker Nolan, his seventh of the year, here in the seventh inning to extend the lead. This ball can be such a roller coaster of emotion sometimes. This ball hit into the gap in right center field, and Colwick has it go all the way to the wall. He will cruise into second base with a double. That is the 41st double of the year for Vanderbilt in SEC play. That is a great swing. Watch how he really works to get down to that baseball. You hear a lot of times guys really work to get to the, bar the barrel of the ball, and in that situation, Got really into his legs, let the ball travel, and really lets Brandon Johnson supply all the power, which just gets the barrel on it, drives that ball in the right center gap. Really great swing there by Colwick. Here is Troy Leneve, who is making his case to Tim Corbin for a little more playing time. Today was Leneve's third start of the season. 19th game in which he has played. It is... Third start in SEC play. Came into today's game hitting 400 and limited at bats. Four for 10 in league play. He's two for three today with solo home run and an RBI single. 1 0 to Leneve coming with Colwick on second, and Leneve takes a strike. Ole Miss got game one last night, three to one. Two-run home run early from T.J. McCants in the second inning, a solo home run. Kevin Graham in the third, and that was enough as the Rebels held on for a three-to-one win. Outstanding pitching performance by Doug Nikhazy. Taylor Broadway came on and closed it out at the end. This ball lined up the middle of base hit. McCants will field it. He'll send it back in, but that is an RBI single for Troy Leneve. He is three for four with three runs batted in in just his third start of the season. Pretty solid day there for Leneve. I mean, you just see that fastball again down, goes down and gets it, drives it right back where it came from, and another base hit, another RBI. And Vanderbilt offensive machine, which was stifled last night, just humming today. Second four spot in an inning today for Vanderbilt. Scored four in the fourth. They get four here in the seventh and lead it by ten. And Enrique Bradfield Jr. at the plate for the fifth time today. He's been on base three times. Couple of walks and a bunt single. You 
you see why that on base percentage for Bradfield is approaching 500. Yeah, that's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, like you see that early in the season, not in May. Coming into today, the on base percentage for Bradfield was. 470 flies this one out to Graham in left field who makes the catch and that ends the inning but not before Vanderbilt adds four more runs the Commodores leading at 11 to 1 stretch time in Swayze Vanderbilt goes to the bullpen Chris McElvain making his 14th appearance of the year he's three and one with an ERA just north of four and 30 and two thirds innings you see the 37 strikeouts and the 16 walks He's got a 10-run lead to work with. Right-hander comes in replacing Jack Leiter, who was outstanding today. It's the ice treatment on the right arm. That's pretty well deserved. Six innings, two hits, one earned run with three walks, 13 strikeouts for the second-year freshman. He was outstanding. Just absolutely worth the price of admission to watch him pitch and work. And Shows you exactly why the scouts will be taking him very early in this upcoming MLB draft. But McIlvain, you know, probably the most overused phrase in baseball is Dandy's throwing another guy out there with extremely talented arm. Hale Baker goes after the first pitch and pops it out to the first baseman in foul ground. So one pitch and one out for Chris McIlvain. Baker go after that fastball, but McElveen's got a fastball that can sit in the mid mid nineties and a slider, curveball, and a cutter as well. So, guy where the numbers ERA over four, but a lot of talent still. And Vanderbilt tagging on another four spot in the last inning really made the decision I think easy for Coach Corbin to pull lighter, try to limit the number of pitches and in innings on a day where they're cruising. One out in the bottom of the seventh inning. That one bounces in for ball two to Calvin Harris. Harris 0 for 2. With a couple of strikeouts. I started looking at the bottom of the order and going, hey, yeah, not much production, but really not much production from anywhere in the lineup other than Jacob Gonzalez at the top of the order, who's been on base all three times. And then Chatagne, who had a single in the sixth inning. Three balls and a strike now to Calvin Harris. That misses for ball four. So Ole Miss gets a one-out base runner in the nine hole. Yeah, and if you're the Rebels, it's just it's all about you got Leiter out of the game. Again, maybe not, definitely not the situation which you would have replaced Leiter, but he's out of the game nonetheless. You're down 10. Just got to try to sell, chip away and get back within one swing of the bat. I mean, that is a goal for the offense at this point moving forward. Jacob Gonzalez has scored the only run of the game today for Ole Miss. Walk, single walk. The freshman shortstop from Glendora, California. Pitch in the dirt, gets away, and Calvin Harris scoots down to second base. No chance there for Rodriguez. Only one other game going right now in the SEC with Florida leading 3-2 over Georgia in the bottom of the third inning. South Carolina blanked Kentucky 9-zip. Missouri doubled up Mississippi State 16-8. Alabama hangs on for a 6-5 win over LSU to split that series. A&M comes from behind and wins 11-9 over Auburn. Gonzalez pops this one up third base side. That's Noland who makes the catch on the edge of the grass for the second out of the inning. So Auburn and A&M will play a deciding game tomorrow. Same thing at Baton Rouge for Alabama and LSU. Missouri wins the series against Mississippi State. They lose 5-4 in game one. Get the win last night and then take the series today in South Carolina. We'll play for a sweep tomorrow against Kentucky. They'll have a rubber game in Knoxville. Looks like we're headed for a rubber game here in Oxford as well. First pitch up to 
shot in Ye for ball one. Vanderbilt has actually made a change at catcher. That is Maxwell Romero Jr. into the game for Rodriguez. Trying to block that one, and again, Calvin Harris reads it in the dirt and gets over to third base. A couple of wild pitches have gotten Calvin Harris around to third. Yeah, and that ball did about as much as he could. You saw him square it up, anticipating the spin on that slider, and it's a good read there by Calvin Harris. Two and one now to Chatagne. One thing with the Ole Miss offense, obviously, I mean, you got a top five pick going on the mound, so everybody generally struggles to barrel up the ball. But the, you know, in the accounts where they were ahead, there's a lot of pitches that they were in the zone to handle, and they just could not get on top of it or put the barrel on it. It wasn't like Leiter had just cruised and was ahead the entire game. I mean, part of his game is he's a little bit wild. and But uh, it's a pretty dominant performance there by Leiter. See if Ole Miss is able to start getting the barrel on the ball here in the seventh. Well, the really, the only time that Ole Miss put Leiter into a pressure situation was in the last half inning in the sixth. There is a walk to Chatagne, second walk of the inning. Ole Miss has first and third with two down. Remember, you had walk, single walk to start the sixth inning for Ole Miss. So the Rebels had the bases loaded with nobody out. And Dunhurst was ahead in the count three and one. And Leiter just reared back and threw back-to-back -back elevated fastballs, and he got Dunhurst to chase both of them out of the zone. And then he got Bench to pop out before the wild pitch strikeout of McCants. You see McIlvain, a couple of walks in two-thirds of an inning. And Scott Brown, the pitching coach for Vanderbilt, I think he is politely saying we have a 10 run lead. Throw Stop walking people. Strikes. So you have the bullpen, McElvain. Nine of his 13 have missed. A couple of wild pitches mixed in as well. They've got Calvin Harris around to third. And two, you know, you, now you're getting to the, the power part of the lineup for Ole Miss with Kevin Graham. Again, 11-4, all of a sudden Ole Miss starts to feel like they're back in the ball game. So if you're McElvain, you got to make some good pitches here. you got two outs. Chance to get out of the inning. Vanderbilt tomorrow will not have a top five pick, at least not in this year's draft that they run out. <laughs> Patrick Riley scheduled to be the starter, making his fifth start of the year against Drew McDaniel for Ole Miss. This ball hit high into the air to right field. Thomas gets to the warning track and will make the catch just in front of the wall. Kevin Graham flirting with his 12th home run of the year. Just got under it. It's 11 to 1 through 7. Vanderbilt 11 runs on 11 hits today. An impressive offensive showing from the number two Commodores, leading it by 10 over Ole Miss as we go to the eighth inning. Richard Cross, Matt McLaughlin with you on this Saturday. Absolutely gorgeous day for baseball in Oxford. Blue skies, white puffy clouds, mid to upper 70s, just a light breeze. Commodores would tell you it has been a good day to hit <laughs> as well. Five home runs in the game today for Vanderbilt. And three of those five have been multi-run homers. A couple of two-run shots. Three-run shot from Parker Noland in the seventh inning. Carter Young leading off. 0 for 2 with a couple of walks. Definitely been a good day at the plate for the guys in black and gold. Not so much... In the red and blue, but difference is one team just consistently hit barrels all day long and find themselves with a 10 run lead. But think if you told Mike Bianco before the series started, we going into Sunday, chance to still win the series with Rocker and Ladder throwing Friday and Saturday, I think he'd feel pretty good about taking that deal. 
Check swing. Young able to hold up on what was a pretty good pitch, three and one. A look at Jeremy Dupree, the third base umpire there. Brandon Johnson's upset because thought that was a strike on the pitch and the swing. I think Young probably held up, but it's a pretty good looking pitch. Here the 3-1. This is a fly ball to left. Kevin Graham on the run to the track. There's another one. 14th home run of the year for Carr Young. Sixth of the day for Vanderbilt. And the Commodores lead it 12-1. Wow. Another oppo taco for the Vandy boys. There's this fastball here just goes with that ball. His belt tie down the middle. Doesn't try to pull it. Just takes it. Drives it to left center gap, and again, the bomb squad for the Vandy boys has been all over the place today. Been a very impressive day. Third hit, and second earned run off of Brandon Johnson. Third pitcher today used for Ole Miss. Derek Diamond went four and a third, inning and two thirds for Tyler Myers. Brandon Johnson, an inning of relief so far for Ole Miss. You never know how a game is going to play out going into it, but as you look to tomorrow, it feels like it is likely going to be an offensive day where if you want to win, you're going to have to score some runs. Yeah, no question. It, you know, the, the elite arms have, have certainly been used. I mean, Vandy certainly has. More back into the bullpen guys left than, than Ole Miss. But, you know, Drew McDaniel has been pretty good for Ole Miss on Sunday as well. And Broadway will be available for probably an extended outing too. But, uh, yeah, it feels like it might be the first to ten tomorrow. Got a good shot at winning it. This one's fouled away. It's kind of based on what we've seen from Mike Bianco in recent weeks. It was like you get as much as you can from Drew McDaniel and then some combination of Austin Miller and Jack Doherty, probably the next two out of the bullpen. Pitch misses for ball three. It's a full count now to Dominic Keegan, who is two for four with a two-run home run, a single, and a couple of runs scored. My guy behind the plate did not even flinch on that foul tip fastball straight behind the plate. Vanderbilt will go with Patrick Riley tomorrow as the starter. They have not used their closer, Luke Murphy, this weekend and can't imagine that we'll see him today. He's got seven saves on the year. We've also not seen Nick Maldonado. There are a bunch of arms on this Vanderbilt team, and pretty much all of them throw in the low 90s. Will count. Strike three called. Keegan goes away looking. Second strikeout since entering for Brandon Johnson. Sunday, the rally cap crew breaks down the week that was in baseball and softball with highlights, analysis, and interviews. They'll also get you set with a look ahead at the upcoming week's best matchups. This week, it's a late night edition of Rally Cap, 11 Eastern, 10 Central, right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. First pitch strike to Maxwell Romero Jr., who is batting for the first time today in place of C.J. Rodriguez. Romero came in as the catcher in the bottom of the seventh. Rodriguez was 0 for 3, hit by a pitch one time with a run score. One one. Change up there by Johnson, who was looking for that fastball. And we touched on it earlier in the broadcast, talking about Ole Miss's resume and the fact that they've lost a bunch of close ball games. Only the second game this year they've lost, assuming that Vanderbilt goes on to to win this one, where they lose by more than five, which is pretty astounding. Well, it's off the end of the bat, but still deep out into center field, where McCants runs it down and makes the catch for the second out of the inning.
So it's been one of those days. You know, if you're Ole Miss, you leave the ballpark and you go, you know what? Hopefully that's all the home runs they have in those bats the rest of the weekend. As you said, that ball even got pretty deep. Just feels like everything Vanderbilt has hit has been with authority. One one now to Parker Nolan. Nolan got into the long ball action with a three run home run in the seventh inning. One for three today with a walk and a couple of runs scored. Two out top of the eighth inning. Commodores in control leading 12 to one. They added a run with a solo shot from Carter Young to lead off here in the eighth. Nolan behind in the count. One ball and two strikes with two down and the base is empty. Couple of hops to Chatagne at second. He throws out Noland to end the inning. And Bill gets a run on a hit. Solo home run. And the Commodores lead at 12 to 1. Now your game recap is Vanderbilt heavy. And the Commodore bats have been heavy today as well. Six home runs today for Vanderbilt. And you couple that with a performance from Jack Leiter. And this was going to be a tough day for Ole Miss. Yeah, Vanderbilt is seeing balloon balls up there today and have absolutely punished Ole Miss pitching today. And Jack Leiter was absolutely dynamic today and showing you exactly why he's in that top five projection. For Jack Leiter today, six innings, two hits, one earned run, three walks, 13 strikeouts. Dunhurst. Leading off, lifts it to left. And that ball is going to fall in foul ground. This is a guy that Ole Miss is really going to need. I mean, they've they've really relied on Dunhurst and talked a lot about injury to Tim Elko, but Dunhurst has been one of the big time sluggers for this Ole Miss lineup. Even if I'm not mistaken, coming into today, he was three for his last 26. How's that one back? This Ole Miss offense has been good and has been consistent. Sitting on two hits in the ballgame. Fewest number of hits the Rebels have had in a single game this year was four against Florida back on April 1st. And if the score holds... This will be only the second time that Ole Miss has lost a game by more than five runs this year. They lost 13 to one on a Tuesday night in Ruston to Louisiana Tech. Full count to Hayden Dunhurst. But so much of the credit goes to Jack Leiter. He was absolutely able to handcuff the Ole Miss bats today. Yeah, and it's not like even if this was a five to one ball game, I mean, it, he was still absolutely lights out. That one scoots past Keegan at first base. He was played deep at the edge of the grass. I'll just scoot it under the glove. Dunhurst with a single. Yeah, tough play there by Keegan. Probably like to see him try to cut the ball off to that was his first step, and then he tried to retreat ground. In that situation, you just got to basically take an angle straight back to right field and then try to flip it over to your pitcher covering the bag. But one of those knocks that can get sluggers going, and so we talked about Dunhurst is a guy that they're going to absolutely need to, to mash for them, for them to continue on their journey to the postseason. Sometimes all you need is a little break there to get the, the swing going again. And the dirt gets away, and Dunhurst eases down to second base on the wild pitch. That's three wild pitches. Yeah, 
And McElveen, you see that three-quarter, it's basically a high three-quarter arm slot where he basically snaps the ball off and some of those off-speed pitches, mostly sliders, just bounce way down in front of the plate. Tough job for any catcher to block those up given the number of spin, spin that that ball has. And you know, the further it hits up in front of the plate, the more time that ball has to move. So always tough for catchers from guys with that arm slot. Another situation here where Ole Miss finds themselves in a plus count. See if Bench is able to get on time with maybe a fastball here if that's where McElvain goes with 11 run lead. His job is just to fill up the zone. 3 1. That ball down in right field. Dunhurst hits the bag at third. He's going to come around to score on an RBI single from Justin Bench. And that makes it 12 to 2. Really good job there by Bench. As we said, it's a plus count on 3 1 and gets a fastball and just drives the ball in the right center. So now TJ McCant comes to the plate. Kansas is 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. He did reach on a wild pitch in the sixth inning. One and one now to TJ McCants. Checks a swing that time, able to hold up. Cantu who hit a huge two-run homer last night off Rockers. Had a tough day at the plate today. Three strikeouts, one on the drop third strike, which allowed the first run to score. Makes a fastball there at the bottom of the zone. And the count evens at two and two. McIlvain. Second pitcher used by Vanderbilt. Couple of walks, couple of wild pitches in the seventh inning, but he got out of the jam. Giving up back-to-back -back singles to start things off here at the bottom of the eighth. Kantz gets a piece of that to stay alive. Their win last night over Vanderbilt. Ole Miss jumped up to number nine in the RPI. A couple of spots from where they started the weekend. Chopper to first. And late getting there, and McCants is safe, and the ball gets away, and that allows Justin Bench to scoot over to third. That is a play that will likely not please Tim Corbin. Yeah, those are the types of plays that drive coaches crazy. You've got a 10 run lead situation there where there's just no reason at all to look to second base. Just take the out at first and move on. All of a sudden, you just keep giving Ole Miss chances. We'll see John Rice Plumley pinch hitting here for Ole Miss. He'll pinch hit for Hayden Leatherwood. So McCants gets an infield single. And then that's going to have to be an error to allow Bench to get to third. John Rice Plumley takes a strike. Plumley hitting for Hayden Leatherwood. Big swing and a miss. It's 0-2 now to Plumley. Off-speed offering. Sophomore from Hattiesburg. Plumley was used as a pinch runner last night. Stayed in in right field for Leatherwood. 
37th game that he's played in this year. Well, wicked sliders there, McIlvain. The bite there on that one. Unlike the ones before, that one not spiked in the dirt, exactly where you want it, the bottom of the zone. And it's quick work of Plumley there. And you see the stout freshman, Kemp, Kemp Alderman. Alderman. Alderman getting the opportunity to pinch hit here for Kale Baker. Alderman had the walk-off home run in the bottom of the ninth inning. Against LSU, and Ole Miss came from behind, trailing nine to one and one ten to nine. Kemp Alderman playing in his just just his fifth game of the season. He's got two hits and twelve at bats. Fastball in on the hands there. Well, that's the pitch that Alderman was looking for, at least in terms of a fastball, but that was a good location for McIlvain, running it inside. Yeah, breaking ball in that first one. Alderman put a good swing and then just completely tied him up there. Might go with an off-speed pitch outside or a fastball way away here. Strike three called, painted the outside corner with a 92-mile-an-hour fastball. Back-to-back -back strikeouts from Chris McIlvain. Ball had some late life, little run back toward the outside corner. May have been a touch outside, but close enough for Matthew Wilbanks. Bianco is going to pinch hit for Calvin Harris and bring on the captain, Tim Elko. Take a swing. See Elko still dealing with that torn ACL. Hit a three run homer last week in Texas AM. A really, really cool story. This was last weekend at College Station in the game two win for Ole Miss over the Aggies. Goes the opposite way. Torn ACL back on April the 5th and just kind of a freak play at first base trying to avoid the first baseman who had fallen down after an errant throw. Took an awkward sidestep, torn ACL. Returned against South Carolina. Pinch hit in that game. Got an incredible ovation. And then last weekend against Texas A&M, it is 10th home run of the season. And obviously still a 10-run ball game, but Elko's just a guy that's going to play a role for Ole Miss down the stretch, and he's still got to see get at bats consistently when he can. So. This is a good move by Coach Bianco. Let his guy see some pitches. Elko chases a high fastball there. He's behind in the count 0-2. Perhaps a little anxious on that one. Bottom of the eighth inning. Ole Miss trailing 12-2. Runners at the corners. Go lays off of that fastball. Count goes to one and two. Pitch there by McLean. One two to Elko. Got Elko in a couple upstairs fastball. See if he goes back to that on the 2 2 or tries to paint up. He did on previous hitter. Got him with a fastball outside corner. 93 miles an hour. Tim Elko goes down swinging. After a couple or three straight singles to start the inning, three straight strikeouts to finish it for McElvain. 12 runs on 12 hits for Vanderbilt. Two runs, five hits. Clean baseball game. Vanderbilt was charged with an error. That was a late 
decision that allowed Justin Bench to get to third. Fourth pitcher of the game for Ole Miss, Cody Adcock, making his 10th appearance of the season. 16 strikeouts, six walks, 2.38 ERA for the right-hander. Adcock out of Texarkana, Arkansas. Kevin Graham has come in from left field and gone to first base. John Rice Plumley is now in right field. And Kemp Alderman, uh, Alderman goes to left. Territory. This one goes out of play. Well, mechanically, Adcock's very similar to what we've seen out of McIlvain. Guy that comes out of that high three quarters arm slot and gets some really good whip action on that fastball. Can run it in the mid 90s and a good off speed pitch as well. Cody Adcock dealing with Isaiah Thomas. Thomas behind in the count, 0-2. First SEC appearance for Cody Adcock. Good weekend for Isaiah Thomas. Had three hits and a couple of home runs over the first two games. Pitch there by Adcock. Thomas has really nice, just very quiet swing. We've obviously seen, obviously seen the power, but there's not a lot of movement, certainly no wasted movement in that swing. Very impressed with what we've seen out of him so far this weekend. He's obviously had a very good year as well. Fly ball. That ball carries and carries and carries out of the yard. Second home run of the day. And third of the weekend for Isaiah Thomas, and Vanderbilt now has seven long balls in this game. Just another ball, fastball up in the zone. And cut that ball at 94. Watch where this fastball is. I and mean, that ball is up at the letters and gets the barrel somewhat on it, but he got underneath it. See a really good hand, strong hand action there by Thomas and just Vanderbilt continues to dial long distance. My goodness, what a day for the Vandy boys offense. So a three hit game for Isaiah Thomas, two of them solo home runs. He's now got 11 on the year. Just kind of backspun that ball out of the park. Yeah, I think you got the barrel to it, obviously, but Underneath it, just a little bit, but as we've seen, the ball has carried extremely well today and it's been quite a display. Just fireworks from this Vanderbilt offense all day long. Seven of Vanderbilt's 13 hits in the game are home runs, and this ball is lifted down the left field wide line the opposite way. Alderman on the run, and it goes foul. That ball was slicing the whole way, and Spencer Jones thought that maybe he had gotten a second home run as well. And he almost did. He almost snuck that one in down the left field line. My goodness. I mean, everything Vanderbilt has put in place seems like he's got a shot to get out of the ballpark, but it's number two on the day there for Jones. Yeah, there are two or three of the seven home runs that have hit that were just absolute no-doubters off the bat. Uh, Isaiah Thomas, the one he hit in the second inning, was really hit well. The ball that Spencer Jones hit in the fourth inning was a complete no-doubter. There have been some balls that off the bat today you thought, well, that's probably a fly ball out. And then you look and it just carries and carries and carries and it's gone. Yeah, and you've seen the Ole Miss offense, I mean, or defenders, I see them wait to see the flight of the ball and so you know they're in a dead sprint. But I'm just, I think what Vanderbilt's done really well today is they just let Ole Miss pitching supply the power, too. We've seen a lot of quiet swings. I mean, the one of Jones hit, as you said. I mean, that ball was hit a mile, but they've just gone with pitches. They haven't tried to overswing. Just got barrels on it consistently. Full count pitch coming to Spencer Jones. He fouls it off to stay alive. Heads up. 
That's the moral of the story. Good things happen when you hit baseball on the barrel. And you're big and strong and talented. Yeah. Talent things. All, all of those other factor. things that go along with it. Another full count pitch. And again, Jones stays alive at the plate. Well, obviously the contrast is evident from the last two games, but it really just makes you marvel at what Doug Nikhazy was able to do yesterday. I mean, he was in complete control. We talked about how dominant Leiter was. Nikhazy had everything working yesterday and really stifled that Vandy offense. Just truly impressive performance. And Nikhazy last night, seven innings, five hits, one earned run with ten strikeouts and two walks. High fly ball to center. McCants for the first out and the top of the ninth. Thursday night here on the SEC Network, it's number one Arkansas hosting number nine Florida in the first game of the final weekend of the regular season. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern. Game two on Friday night is at 8 Eastern. You can always watch on the ESPN app. That'll be a fun one to end the regular season. Mm. All seven series next weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. The league went to that format several years ago with the SEC tournament beginning on Tuesday. Good luck picking a winner of the <laughs> SEC tournament. Ball on a strike. Olvik out in front there, one and two. I mean, the top of the league is obviously elite in its own right, but you got teams like Alabama got some dudes on the mound. And well, now that's, know. that's an out there pick. Never know. Yeah, you look at this Vanderbilt team and absolutely Tennessee's been so incredibly impressive. Yeah, what Vitalo has done there with that program is unbelievable. The year they're having is absolutely remarkable. Obviously, Arkansas has not lost a series all year long. Florida's playing its best baseball of the year. Mississippi State, despite not playing well this weekend, has been pretty darn consistent all season. And this Ole Miss team, probably the question is, is there enough pitching to go through it? You know, if you kind of win your way through on the winner's bracket, but Ole Miss will very likely be playing on that first Tuesday. So you got an extra day. There's no question this Ole Miss team can swing it enough to give themselves a chance to stay for a while. Yeah, it's always interesting to see how things set up. I mean, obviously the weekend before that final series dictates a lot, but for the teams that got to win that Tuesday game, for postseason just getting in implications, I mean, it's just interesting to see how coaches play that up at an opening game, and Ole Miss will be one of those that are going to throw their guys to set up for the postseason regional play, and for them, they're going to need somebody to step up out of that bullpen on that Tuesday game. 2-2, two -two, swing and a miss. Second out of the inning. After the leadoff home run, a fly out and a strikeout as Kolvik goes down. Good breaking ball there. Pretty nasty depth there for Madcock, who, again, doesn't really matter who Ole Miss has thrown up there today. Vanderbilt has put some good swings on there, but a good young pitcher Ole Miss has that, again, Mike Bianco, we Keep saying this is still searching for one or two guys he can go to in clutch times. How about this guy, Troy Laneve, batting in the nine hole today. Three for four. He flew out back in the third inning. Since then, solo home run and a couple of RBI singles. Takes away for ball one there. Had only six runs batted in all season. He's added three to that tally today. Ball and 
Two strikes now to Laniv. Three really good pitches there from Adcock. That 1-1 one, one right there. Let's get ahead in the count, see if he goes back to the fastball now, or seeing him kind of nibble there on the outside part of the plate. All in two strikes. He fouls it away. I need the sophomore from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and it really is crazy when you look at this Vanderbilt roster. They truly recruit from a national standpoint. Canada, California, Florida, New York, Massachusetts, Maryland, New Jersey, Missouri, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, Wisconsin, Maine. Make sure that recruiting budget is well fed. Seems like there'd be a lot of trips out all over the place, but obviously Coach Corbin and his staff have found talent in all corners of this country. You know what's crazy about that too is they just it's not like they're in some remote part. You see a really nice fastball there from Adcock. And Eve goes away looking for the third out of the inning. Ole Miss, final three outs coming to the plate in the bottom of the ninth. McIlvain back out on the mound to try and finish it off for Vanderbilt. A couple of innings of relief work for Chris McIlvain after Jack Leiter's day was done. Richard Cross, Matt McLaughlin with you. Swayze Field, nearly 11,000 earlier. Many of them have eased onto the house, maybe to the square. A little dinner plans. Leiter went six innings, gave up two hits, struck out 13. McIlvain has worked two scoreless, or excuse me, uh, two innings. He's given up three hits and has allowed a run. Garrett Wood leading off for Ole Miss, batting in place of Jacob Gonzalez. And Wood falls behind in the count 0-2. Gonzalez was on base three times today, officially one for two. Garrett Wood, the left-handed hitter. Pops it up, shallow left. Laneve camps under it and makes the catch. Actually, that is Matt Hogan now in left field for Vanderbilt. So one away and Ole Miss going to another pinch hitter with Ben Van Cleve. Things have really set up well for Coach Corbin. I mean, he's going to end up getting through this game and assuming things continue on this path, but only using four guys through two games. As we talked about the number of talented arms they have, and that's huge for going into a Sunday series rubber match. Quickly 0-2 to Van Cleve. Outside for a ball. Swing and a miss. Two down in the inning as Van Cleve goes down on four pitches, and Vanderbilt is one out away from evening this series in a game apiece. Really tight slider there by Michael Bain. And exactly what you want to do with a double digit lead. Just keep filling up the zone and get your guys into the, into the house and get ready for a Sunday matchup. Should be a fun one tomorrow. And one more pinch hitter for Ole Miss. Cade Salmon's getting the opportunity to hit. So the last six hitters have all been pinch hitters. Plumley, Alderman, Elko, Wood, Van Cleve, and now Salmon's. Round ball to second. Hit by Colwick over to first, and that ends the inning. And Vanderbilt impressive on this Saturday in Oxford. Seven home runs 
13 runs on 13 hits. Vanderbilt's ninth win of the season by 10 or more runs. The third time they've done that in SEC play. Commodores with the win improved to 36 and 11 on the year and 17 and 8 in the SEC. Ole Miss now 15 and 11 in the league. 35 and 15 overall. And that sets up a deciding game three tomorrow afternoon. Game coming your way on the SEC Network. First pitch, 2 o'clock local time. Vanderbilt, Matt, really impressive today. Yeah, dominant in all facets of the game. Lighter was electric and the bats were smoking today. Thanks for joining us on a beautiful Saturday in Oxford for our entire SEC Network crew. And my partner, Matt McLaughlin, I'm Richard Cross. Commodores win it 13-2. Lighter with the W.